today's meeting to order. Uh, I wish to acknowledge the presence of Senator Amy Marcos in order of arrival, Senator Pangilinan, Senator Subiri, Senator Binay, and Senator Bongo. And uh, this is a continuation of the public hearing held last October 12, 2020. Yes. Yes. By the Senate Committee on Finance, Subcommittee B, for the proposed uh, fiscal year 2021 budget of the Department of Agriculture, Office of the Sec Secretary, its bureaus, and its attached agencies and corporation. Today, we will be tackling the proposed budget of the Department of Agriculture, Office of the Secretary, its banner programs, bureaus, and the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. Uh, I wish to announce also that in te at ten thirty we will uh, we will break for a while so that we can tackle the uh, Senate Joint Resolution Number Twelve authorizing the use of the excess collection of the Bureau of Customs for the year twenty twenty and twenty nineteen under the rice tarification law as cash assistance for the rice farmers to be included in the General Appropriations Act of 2021. Uh, so uh, we should not be surprised that at 10.30, we will hold another uh, uh, meeting to tackle this resolution so that uh, that will be included in the 2021 uh, GAA that we will give the excess of the uh, collection of tariff of the rice tarification law to that will be given to RCEP, the excess will be used for financial assistance to our rice farmers. So that's it. So we will now start with the uh, proposed budget, 2021 budget of the Department of Agriculture. And so we have here, uh, we wish to acknowledge the presence of Secretary William Dar. Okay. And uh, uh, Undersecretary for Policy and Planning, Rodolfo Vicera. Okay. Undersecretary for Livestock, National Livestock Development Program, Dr. William Medrano. Undersecretary for Administration and Finance, Roldan Gorgonio. Uh, Undersecretary for Special Concerns, Waldo Carpio. An Assistant Secretary Designate for Planning, Project Development, Concurrent Director, Planning and Monitoring Service, Agnes Catherine Miranda. Assistant Secretary Designate for Operations, Engineer Andrew Villacorta. Assistant Secretary for the Visayas, Attorney Hansel O. Didulo. Assistant Secretary for Special Affairs, Larry A. Panes. OIC Director of Agribusiness and Marketing Assistance Service, uh, Ramon C. Yedra, represented by Rowena Hinete. Okay. Uh, Chief Budget Division, Telma Tolentino. Uh, Senior Special Technical Assistant, National Corn Program, Dr. Lorenzo Caringan. Uh, Officer in Charge Program Director, High Value Crop Program, uh, Nichols A. Manalo. Uh, why? What happened to Mrs. Lavinia? Uh, can you? Uh, what happened to Mrs. Lavinia, uh, Dr. Dar? Secretary Dar? Did I imagine it? Secretary Dar. Oh, uh, nandito si Yusek Labinia at uh, she's the Yusek for high value crops. Right. But and, what uh, do you mean by officer in charge? <laughs> we have another one in charge of high value crop or assistant na Yusek Labinia. Ito yung program director ng high value uh, crops. Okay. Hindi siya OIC po. Okay. Uh, Director National Organic Agriculture Program, Bernadette San Juan. Uh, Program Management Director, Rice Resiliency Program, Dr. Dionisio Alvindia. 
and uh, Program Director, Special Area for Agricultural Development, uh, Dr. Meyer Mula, Philippine Rubber Research Institute, Dr. Dennis Palabrica, uh, OIC Director, Internal Audit Service, Attorney Joan Hagonos Oliva, Head ASEP Program Management Secretariat, uh, Attorney Jane C. Bacayo, OIC Director, Information and Communication Technology Service, Honorio Flamenio, and Head Agricultural Competitiveness Enhancement Fund Program Management Secretariat, Attorney Jane C. Bucayo. And uh, Director, Agriculture and Training Institute, Alfred S. Aton. Okay. Uh, uh, Director Philippine, uh, rather, and uh, uh, Regional Executive Director, Ilocos Region, Nestor Domenden, uh, Region uh, Director, Region 2, uh, Narciso Edilio, Director, uh, Region 3, Crispulo Bautista Jr., Director, Region 4A, Arnel V. De Mesa, uh, Director, Western Visayas, Region 6, Remily Recoter, uh, Director, Region 7, Attorney Salvador Dipudado, Director, Region 8, Angel C. and Angel C. Enriquez, uh, Director, Region 9, Rad Dan Sideño, Director, Region 10, Carlin Collado, and Director, Region 13, Caraga I Abel James Monte Agudo, and Regional Director, Region 5, Rode Rodel Tornilla, Assistant Secretary for Finance, Attorney Francisco Villano, under Secretary for High Value Crops and Rural Credit, Evelyn Labina. Uh, Under Secretary for Operation and Agri Fisheries Mechanization, Engineer Ariel Kayanan. Under Secretary and Chief of Staff, Cheryl Marie Natividad Caballero. OIC BIFAR Director and Concurrent Assistant Director for Operation, Dr. Juan. Albaliadejo and OIC Director, Bureau of Soils and Water Management, Sonia M. Salguero. Uh, Director, Financial and Management Service, Miriam Roberta Cornelio. Assistant Director, Bureau of Agricultural Research, Digna Sandoval. Assistant Secretary, Designate for Policy Research Service, Noel A. Padre. Okay, so that's it. So we have a sequence of presentation. We have the uh, first is the DA Office of the Secretary, then the banner programs, which include National Rice Program, National Organic Agriculture Program, National Livestock Program, National Corn Program, High Value Crop Development Program, Market Development Service, and Halal Food Industry Development Program. Then we have the bureaus. We have the Agricultural Training Institute, Bureau of Agriculture and Fisheries Engineering, Bureau of Agriculture and Fisheries Standard, Bureau of Animal Industry, Bureau of Agricultural Research, Bureau of Plant Industry, Bureau of Soil and Water Management, Philippine Rubber Research Institute, and then the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. I just want to ask the Senator if uh, you want that we finish all the presentation before you ask questions or while we are presenting, we can ask questions. Uh, Fair. Uh, Madam what? Chair? Yes. Ako, we can finish muna with all the presentations. Uh, Pero gano'n yeah. kahaba ho ba yung mga presentation nito? Marami to eh. Baka we have to do questions na one on each program. Kasi kung may concern kayo sa program, baka malimutan na natin pagbalit. What do you think? Uh, how about you, uh, Senator 
pangilinan, what is your opinion? Ma'am, kung maikli lang yung mga presentation, siguro dun sa major programs, we can raise questions and then basta lang maikli yung presentation ng mga attached agencies at bureaus. How uh, about uh, Sen uh, Senator Aimee, what's your opinion? Um, siguro po tuloy-tuloy na lang mag-present unless there's a real urgent question o sa importanteng programa. Yeah, like the National Rice Program, di ba? Very important. Baka may stack up na tayo dyan, 1 million questions na naman yan. <laughs> so you want to finish all the presentation? Mahaba to eh. Maybe we can uh, hear first the Office of the Secretary, then the Banner Program, the Bureaus later on na lang, di ba? Oh, yeah, yung important uh, na naman na naman. Uh, o yung Banner Programs naman at saka si Secretary, di ba? Yun. Then the bureaus, we will go with the bureaus after we have finished with the banner programs, di ba? Do you agree with me? So we can do it that way. Kasi kung tatapusin natin lahat ang presentation na ito, napakarami nito eh. Baka makakalimut-limut na tayo dito. We just, uh, they finish up to the banner programs and then we become begin questioning the banner programs. And then later on, we can continue with the bureaus. Okay. So we now acknowledge uh, Secretary Dar to make the presentation. Yeah, uh, magandang umaga po sa magigiting na mga senador, Honorable Cynthia Villar, Chair of the Committee on Finance of Committee B, distinguished members of the committee, fellow servant leaders and workers in government, Ladies and gentlemen, maganda at masaganang umaga po sa ating lahat. If you ate today, thank a farmer. My farmer parents used to always tell me, kung tutusin kulang ang pasasalamat sa matinding sakripisyo ng ating mga magsasaka at mangingisda, kailangan nilang bumangon sa araw-araw bago pa man tumilaok ang manok. Umulan man o umaraw, tuloy ang kanilang pagbabanat ng buto. Sa hapon, uuwi sila sa kanilang pamilya na pagod at masakit ang katawan. Our farmers and fishers toil and sweat their hearts out just to meet the daily needs of every Filipino. The rice, meat, fish, dairy, almost everything that each of us consume come from their hard work. What many people seem to overlook is that the food we eat comes from a source and that source must be grown, nourished, and sustained, similar to planting a garden. For food security, we must create the right conditions to nourish Philippine agriculture and to support all the hardworking people behind it. Agriculture has long been linked to increasing food availability and to reducing food insecurity and malnutrition. It has long held the promise of freeing our people from the vicious cycle of conflict and poverty. Unlocking these potentials require what I call change, change, change in the mindset of all stakeholders, a major transformation in the way we appreciate and give value to agriculture and food systems. Productivity had waned over the years and challenges of the past, such as strengthening of uh, technology development, rural infrastructure, credit facilities, marketing support, and irrigation continue to haunt us to this day. The advent of climate change and increased global competition makes more Filipino farmers, fisher folk, and agripreneurs most vulnerable, making them less food secure and less able to compete. Then came COVID-19, which placed tremendous pressure on our food production and distribution systems as it did globally. The magnitude of our responses must therefore match the scale of these challenges. 
They should be comprehensive, science-based, inclusive, and innovative to allow us build efficient and resilient food production and distribution systems to feed our growing population now and in the future. Madam Chair, the call of the times is clear. The transformation of Philippine agriculture into a dynamic high growth sector is essential now more than ever for the country. It is the surest way if we are to speed up our economic recovery from the pandemic and achieve a meaningful poverty reduction and inclusive growth. I'm thankful that despite the social paralysis and economic slowdown the pandemic has wrought, the agriculture sector remains resilient, even growing a quite surprising 1.6% in the second quarter of this year. Allow me to recognize Madam Chair and the members of the committee, all the hardworking men and women in the department, and humbly give due credit to DA's very own plant, plant, plant program, which since the start of the community quarantine have been part of our strategy, becoming our umbrella flagship program to ensure food security and way forward under the new normal. We in the department also wish to thank our esteemed legislators in granting us the 24 billion stimulus package under Bayanihan II. Your ever gracious support will enable us to continue intensify our productivity and income enhancement programs, as well as deliver social protection and amelioration projects to our most affected farmers and fisher folk. I assure you, we in the department will not rest on our past laurels. Instead, we will work doubly hard to achieve more for the sector and give our agri-fishery stakeholders a good fighting chance against these adversities. We also commit ourselves, uh, Madam Chair and the members, to good governance and no to corruption. Madam Chair, our farmers and fishers require steady, consistent, and principled leadership in government during these times of transition and transformation. And with your help, I am confident we can address that need. We will never lose sight of our mandate, ensuring food security for the whole country and seeing to it that the farmers and fisher folks will now become more prosperous. At this point, Madam Chair, may I request and, and give the floor to uh, our Undersecretary for Policy and Planning, Undersecretary Rodolfo Becerra, to present the proposed 2021 plans and budget. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Madam Chair, good morning. Um, I, I wish to present uh, the broad policy directions that have been instituted since the start of Secretary Dar's uh, assumption to office for the which are, which are now the directions being taken by our department. And uh, briefly after that, a broad summary of the various uh, uh, budget figures that we have uh, included in this budget for 2021. So next chart, please. Uh, just a brief description of where we are. We are happy to note that this year, for the first half of the year, we were able, the, the agriculture sector was among the encouraging, uh, I mean, posted a very encouraging figure in terms of the entire economy. We grew up 1.6% in the first half of the year, even with the net uh, losses of 5.4 billion uh, due to the Taal eruption and the onslaught of typhoons in the first half of the year. And 1.6% uh, uh, really uh, is uh, remarkable 
in the midst of the effects of the COVID pandemic, uh, which has impacted very difficult, I mean, very grossly uh, negative uh, for the other sectors. No? And uh, next chat, please. This actually showed that uh, the pandemic has uh, mildly affected uh, the employment uh, in the sector. Okay, We had some the reduction, but it's only 3.5% as compared to the other sectors, industry and services. And so our broad direction is how to interlink some more with the other two sectors to be able to at least assist them in, in, in further growing the economy and uh, ad, uh, absorbing uh, part of the uh, dislocated uh, jobs from the other sectors towards the agriculture sector. Next chart, please. This, the next chart will show you the broad policy directions that have been introduced since the new administration in the, sec in the uh, department came in. We would like to highlight that uh, in terms of vision, okay, we are looking at a food secure and resilient Philippines with prosperous farmers and fishers. Really the difference po between this vision and in the past, ang focus po kasi ng visions that have been uh, uh, introduced has, has been on productivity. But this time around, we are very emphatic that the vision includes also the incomes of farmers and fishers. And in this uh, uh, framework that we are now showing you, meron pong napasingit na very urgent matter because of the COVID pandemic. And that is the two lanes, lay, layers there, the survive, reboot, and grow, which, is our, uh, which now comprise the re response of the department for the COVID uh, uh, situation, scenario. And we need to still protect our product production, the availability of food, accessibility, affordability, price stability, and uh, sustainability and food safety. But that does not forget the main vision that the secretary has brought in, which now comprise of what we call the eight paradigms. Uh, farm consolidation, modernization, industrialization, uh, export promotion, infrastructure development, which I will briefly uh, explain in the next few slides, Your Honors. Next slide, please. So this restates our vision now for the department. We want a food secure and resilient Philippines with prosperous farmers and fishers. And the mission is to empower farmers and fisher folk through collective action and attract private sector investments with uh, inclusive agribusiness towards agriculture, agricultural uh, efficiencies, productivity, sustainability, and resilience. At yan po sa kanan, you'll still see the eight paradigms, which I will briefly describe in turn po. Next chart, please. Modernization focuses really on improving the farmer's methodologies, no? how we can get them to adapt a set of science-based farming practices and good agricultural practices so that we can promote better productivity. And uh, below are some of the things that we will work on in the various programs. Next chart, please. Next chart. In terms of this focus on industrialization, uh, we are looking at how to promote entrepreneurship, how to bring in the techniques, management techniques, and organization to be able to make our farmers more productive as groups as in, uh, and, and manage their value chains. Next chart, please. In terms of export promotion, ito po ay isa ring very important aspect that we long to be able to do, improve our competitiveness. Uh, the, the focus on this is to raise, that the reason why we're also focusing on this is we should be able to raise the standards and quality of our product, production systems. Nandoon po yung focus natin dito. 
so that anytime we are able to compete with other competitors in the other countries. Another major program now of the Secretary is what we call the Farm and Fisheries Clustering and Consolidation of the department. Yes, sir. We call it the F2C2 uh, in, because we have seen this all, also in the various uh, experiences po ng ating mga successful groups. No? Uh, we have seen this, uh, uh, Madam Chair, in your own uh, uh, in your own program, pagdating ko doon sa Villar si Pag Awards, we have seen that the moment our farmers and fishers group together, they are able to improve their systems and productivity and, 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 and they can really focus on the value chain approach. And uh, this is a, a short description po of the uh, programs and projects that we have in this uh, under this new approach now that the department is, is following, we would like to see farmers clustered into a mean, rice farmers, for instance, a minimum of 100 hectares, corn and the other grain crops, 75 hectares, and then uh, for high value crops, maybe a minimum of 50 hectares. As, and the same is true with uh, livestock and uh, fisheries. Let me just show you an example of this, Madam Chair, uh, in the next chart. Okay. The next chart shows you some uh, two examples. If we can grow, if we can bring together a group of farmers for 100 hectares, their, their val value chain will be improved and we are, they will be able to produce up to 19 million pesos in terms of production. And this will be able to raise their level of productivity, especially when we are able to assist them with professional farmers, helping them raise their number one productivity, improving their costs, uh, re reducing their costs, better access to inputs and money. Can I interject um, the presentation and ask something? Yes. Can yes, I interject? Yeah. Uh, who will do this? Usually in all our legislation, it's the Cooperative Development Authority who will organize them. In DA, are you going to be the one to organize or you will ask the help of the Cooperative Development Authority? Yes, ma'am. We will work together with... with because uh, there's no mention of... Uh, because when you say that uh, we... In Villarsi, Pag, we do this. We award the best cooperative and farmers association who reduce, uh, which reduce poverty in the Philippines. So we are relying on cooperative. So I thought that we should uh, encourage uh, farmers to form cooperative. So uh, yes, is there an office in your uh, department who will do this? Uh, who will? encourage the formation of cooperative or you will ask we, CDA to do this? I just want Madam, to ask that question. Kasi walang mention dito on who will do this. Oh. Tama po. Uh, let me answer that, uh, Madam Chair. We will strengthen an office here in DA. And what that is will the name really of the office? What is the name of the office? What is the name of the office? Institutional Development Office that will work with CDA in enhancing the uh, formation of uh, farmers cooperatives and associations. Can you give me the people in charge of the Institutional Development Office so that if we need them, we know whom to get in touch with the problem? Because with a with a big organization, you don't know whom to approach for a particular problem. So I would like to think that you should include that in your presentation. Sino ba in charge nito? Para kami, pag maghahanap kami, alam namin kung sino ang pupuntahan. Oh, okay. We will Sige. give you, ma'am. Yeah, we okay. Thank you. you. Thank you. So, Madam Chair, just to continue, this also takes inspiration. For instance, for dito sa livestock, in one of the uh, cooperatives that is a billiar si Pagawardi, yun pong Pag Padre Garcia in Batangas. Uh, yun po. The, this really takes inspiration from from uh, the programs that you have already in, uh, institutionalized. Uh, next chart, please. 
in next chart. In terms of the other uh, aspects po ng aming eight strategic trust and paradigms, we still have some more. Infrastructure development is key in our programs. Uh, recognizing that uh, we need not just farm to market roads for next chart. Uh, for our farmers, but also processing facilities and equipment. And uh, the seventh and eighth uh, part of our road mapping uh, uh, of the roadmaps is, of course, increasing budget and investments. And when we are able to do this, we need to also not just increase, not just the budget, because medyo kailangan pong marami po tayong i-address. Uh, uh, our farmers are still uh, mostly into the, in, in, under the poverty level. And uh, we need also to, in, to link them up through this farm cluster and consolidation with investors. And then in the roadmap development po, we are now studying how to complete po yung road mapping for 56 different commodities in the uh, plant sector, uh, livestock sector, and fisheries sector. In terms of legislative support, Chair, uh, Madam uh, Chair, Madam Chair, yes, yes. Can we request lang po for submission yung fifty six commodities na nabanggit nila? Okay, so yes, we asked the Department of Agriculture to see, to to submit the fifty six uh, commodities which they will support in their. Uh, uh, they will give legislative, uh, rather, their support in their national expenditure program. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. We will submit that. Ang state po nitong road mapping, uh, road mapping exercise po namin is that we have already done the the value. I mean, the mapping of the different products coming from each of these commodities. For instance, po. Yung coconut, uh, we have mapped yung mga where it goes until the buku juice and all the processed products. But we still need some more uh, deeper studies and we will need uh, your support po to complete this. Our objective po dito sa road mapping exercise is not just to do a one year, but medium term and long term development for each of these products. So, medyo nasa beginning stages pa lang po yung aming. Nasimulan, and we will be submitting to you the initial impact uh, if uh, output po namin na nagawa na namin. Uh, next chart, please. Uh, this lists down our priority legislative agenda in support po of the legislation of the le the legislation that have been passed already. And the, the new agenda that we're com that coming out that the Senate also may have already sent, uh, I mean, uh, presented, you know? uh, Number one po sa atin uh, is, uh, I, I'm showing here in this list, is yung Coconut Farmers Industry Development Trust, and we support po your your directions in this. Then, uh, may I interject? Uh, we have passed the Coconut Farmers and in the in Industry Development Trust Fund. Uh, the Senate has passed that. We're waiting for the House, and then we'll do the BICAM. Salamat so po, that's Chair. out of the ano, proposed legislation. We have passed that. Yeah. No po. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. And, and the land, course, National yes. Land Use Act is with DNR. It's not with agriculture. Uh, we support lang po. I mean, uh, uh, support po ito because it will help us in the sector, in, in the agriculture sector. Uh, gusto ko lang pong i-highlight po ang dalawa pong item dito, tatlo siguro. Magna Carta I mean, for Young Farmers. We have a, a, a we have a legislation for that. I think it's just an amendment. I think we have passed a leg legislation on young farmers. You look for the legislation. Yes, okay. we will closely work with your staff for this month. And then it's agri agra law. We have problems with that. We don't agree in the agri agra law. So we're holding it because uh, we don't agree. Uh, Okay, ma'am. On how we will uh, revise the Agri-Agra law. Okay. 
we will closely work with your staff, Madam. Actually, Madam. in the agri agra law, the agri part is okay. The agra is the one with problem because they have no no uh, what you call this uh, titles to to use as uh, collateral in the banks. That's why the DAR has now uh, uh, programmed the the titling of agricultural uh under the agrarian land reform uh, uh they what's the name is sleep sleep program uh, something like that oh. and it was financed by world bank so uh we we under that yung meron na sila dyan sa what do you call this uh yung problem ng agri agra they're sir they're solving that because they're now titling individually uh, yung titles ng land reform beneficiaries. Kasi ang may problema, AGRA, hindi yung AGRI. Yes, ma'am. Thank you okay. very much, ma'am, for the guidance. We will consult with you, your staff, ma'am, to, to finalize some more. If you, you want rainwater, why don't you allocate a portion of your budget to rainwater harvesting? Uh, we don't have we to pass that. You just allocate a portion of your budget. Oh. We will, ma'am. We will. We will, ma'am. <laughs> And then urban somebody. agriculture, you allocate a certain portion of your budget there. Um, bamboo yes, industry, the DNR is allocating a big part of their budget under the greening program. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So uh, thank you very much, ma'am, for the guidance. And we will consult some more with your staff. Para we have passed the Organic it. Agriculture Act. So we have finished that. It has been passed. It will be signed by the president anytime now. Oh, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, next, going to the next chart, this now uh, summary provides a summary of the budget proposal that we have, ma'am. We have a total of proposal of 86.3 billion pesos. Uh, in terms of, uh, no, in terms of the uh, distribution, capital outlays is for 29.43 percent or 25.4 billion uh, uh, we have uh, financial expenses 1.4 billion MOOE is six uh, 55 billion or 63.75 percent capex I, I mentioned that our MOOE, uh, I mean, the PS is uh, 5.9 billion pesos. Next chart, please. This is now the distribution by programs, by projects, and by agencies. In terms of the programs, we have seven banner programs. Uh, Rice gets 15.7 billion. <laughs> Livestock gets 1.1 1 .1 billion. Corn gets 1.4 billion, 1.5 roughly. High value crops gets 1.6 billion. Organic agriculture will get half a billion pesos. And fisheries will get 2.9 billion. Halal continues to receive uh, roughly 23 billion. A million, million, sorry. May so I interject? May I interject, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, this fisheries program, is this different from the budget of before? It, it's the same, ma'am. So it, it's it part, is included in their activities. So part they have a budget of a little less than six billion. This is included there. The fisheries program more. Or yes, is this is additional budget. That this is included attribution okay language. okay your rice program this is an addition to rcep yes, billion. so yes, parang ang rice program natin 25 billion na roughly yes ma'am yes yeah that's true and then we have a 7 billion budget in nfa okay so you. so okay. your program now has 30 more than 30 billion for rice Yes, ma'am. Okay. I just want to clarify. Oh. Okay. Next chart, please. 
We are now also uh, presenting the projects naman po. Uh, we have 9.958 billion for FMR projects. We have uh, the special area for agriculture development, uh, 1.365 1. Uh, billion. We have the fourth case program for the kabuhayan at kaunaran ng mga kababayang katutubo. Uh, uh, may I question? Uh, are you going to explain that Saad program? After oh, what? Okay. Yes, ma this will be part of the uh, no, process. Can I correct I that? That's RCEF with an F, not uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Program. Program. Yeah. Yeah. Program. That's the funding is RCEF, but, uh, but the program is ito po, ang tawag, RCEF. And then uh, RSBSA updating po, as you see here, we have provided uh, 220 million, although this is uh, quite a reduction from last year. Uh, Balik Provincia, uh, we, are, uh, in, we have included some 500 M for this to assist po in that uh, program para maging partner po din kami sa employment process dito. And the PRDP has still a new funding with worth 576 million. Uh, it's there, but this is still a reduction, 75% reduction from last year. Next chart, please. In terms of the distribution din po of this budget, uh, in the department, uh, we have uh, the... OSEC receiving uh, an increase of 7.92%, uh, roughly 7% to 56.8 billion. The ACPC gets 2.3 billion, but this is a uh, the far. That's 4.6 billion. The FPA, 156 billion. The million, million, sorry. The NFRDI, 290 billion. NMIS gets 444 million. The PCC gets 495, although this is a reduction already by 17%. The Filmec gets 300. Uh, 52 million and PCAF okay, uh, receives 228 and lastly the Phil FIDA 370 million. Next uh, Again, a question. That before budget, is that different from the uh, the one you said that you have a fisheries program? You add that to this before budget? Uh, this is now the total for the agencies, Madam Chair. It's 4.6 billion together with the fisheries program, or you add okay. that to this? Parang mali Ito yan. Ito yung budget, including Parang mali yan. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, napakadaming items tungkol sa fisheries. Yung iba add and subtract, medyo nakakahilo yeah, that, eh. You you make us, well, but you sinasama dyan, kasi we will hear the BIFAR budget differently. So sana pagsamasamahin niyo yung BIFAR under this, para hindi tayo nalilito. Kasi, ito lang, as I remember, ito lang uh, BIFAR has a 6 billion budget, kasama na lahat. So nagtataka ako, parang dito, hindi yung 4.6 ha. Opo, if if I may add, yung meron siyang 27% reduction from last year sa BIFAR, pero may program sa OSEC, mayroon rin Fisheries Development Authority, oh. na almost 300% increase, may National Fisheries Research, okay. tapos meron pang Fisheries Regulatory and Law Enforcement na bumaba naman. Kaya medyo nahihilo ako Sabat reaction natin sa fishery. Parang dapat tanggalin na dito yan. Uh, 
I want all the bef- the fisheries budget together so we can discuss it together. Bakit nyo ba pinaghihiwahiwalay? Nililito nyo kami. This is, eh. the, this is just the broad overview for the department. They're no, no, we're, we're getting confused. Because there is a separate hearing for the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. Pagsamasamahin nyo doon para naiintindihan namin. Huwag nyo kami guluhin. Salamat po, ma'am. We'll Kasi may major findings dyan sa BIFAR eh. They haven't done any program for the fishermen. Yung mga congressman, nag-pass uh, nag, uh, sila ng establishing hatcheries, wala silang nagawa so far for the last four years and we're going six years. At yung dinadahilan nila budget. Samantalang, yung BIFAR of uh, the last administration, pareho din ang budget but they were able to establish more than 500 fish landing facilities. So sabi ko, ano ipakikita nyo after six years? Kung yun lang pinasa ng mga congressman na hatcheries, na mabuti nga, interesado yung mga congressman sa fisheries, bihira naman ng congressman mahilig sa agriculture, eh ba't hindi nyo pa i-build para uh, meron naman kayong performance na mapapakita sa pag-alis nyo ng pwesto, <laughs> di ba? Yun ang question ko sa kanila. Because the last administration, they were able to build more than 500 fish landing facilities all over the Philippines. In fact, pag mo ng picture yes, na, doon lahat sila, pare-pareho kulay nila. E ba tayo, yung uh, pinasa pa ng Congress na hatcheries, wala silang yes, nabibuild miski isa. Oh. Yes, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm very Chair. interested in a BIFAR budget separately together. Lahat ng ano nyo sa BIFAR. Pagsamasamahin nyo doon at pag-usapan natin BIFAR separately. Opo, yes, Madam Chair. Yes, kasi ang nababasa ko, pito yung item na may kinalaman sa fisheries, may aquaculture sa program, may fisheries regulatory, may fisheries development, may fisheries research, May uh, karugtong pa na Philippine Council Agrofisheries, tapos may OSEC program, tapos may BIFAR. Apakarami ah, eh, ewan ko bakit chinapchap po nakakahilo at yung iba dagdag, yung iba bawas. So hindi ko mabasa sa ba direction natin, are we investing so that we stop pa uh, importing even galunggong or are we... Uh, giving up on fisheries because there's a 27% reduction in BIFAR. I, I'm a bit lost po. In addition, uh, Secretary Dar, in 2016 or sometime in the beginning of your term, we passed the, uh, no, the IUUF. Uh, rather, during the, time, the previous administration, we passed the IUUF. The assurance with me to pass that IUUF, you will increase your uh, income from regulatory uh, to 1 billion pesos a year. But what happened, uh, it's more than 100 million during that time. Now, it's less than 100 million. So, imbis na nag-increase, lalong bumaba yung regulatory. So, uh, so nagugulat kami na after passing IUUF, lalong hindi na-regulate ang uh, fishing in the municipal water. So, medyo malumpay tayo sa fisheries. So, ayun pa sa budget nila, may decrease yung fishery regulatory. Mas lalong hindi makakakolekta to. Kasi yung 1.7, no. naging 800 na lang to. But, but they have income in regulatory, ha? And they are not declaring it. They are not declaring it. Oh. <laughs> Madam it? Chair, man. Oh. Madam, Madam Chair? Madam Chair? Yes. Madam Chair. Uh, in a few minutes, ho, we'll be taking a break. Uh, Magta-1030 na ho eh. Baka pagbalik natin, pwedeng ayusin muna ng DA at mag-consolidate to nila for fisheries para pagbalik ko natin, eh, yeah. ma-present yeah. nila yung bagong kwenta. Sige po. Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Kasi very concerned ang mga legislators sa fisheries eh. Sige po, uh, Madam They're Chair. interested in fisheries. <laughs> Last slide na lang po. Uh, yeah, okay. We finish and then we transfer to that ano, uh, uh, that, uh, hearing on uh, FA to farmers, financial assistance to farmers. Okay, go ahead. You finish. Uh, yes, ma'am. Opo. 
we will try to come up to the summary figure po for the fisheries. And uh, thank you. Very Next chart, please. Next chart. Ito na, po. Ito na po ang last chart, actually. Thank you lang po kami. That we have uh, at least give you, given you a brief description and a broad overview of our budgets and plans for next year. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, maraming salamat. Ayusin namin yung data ng fisheries para minsanan na lang natin pa i-evaluate po. Pakiayos na ninyo. For an hour, maybe the uh, budget hearing of the Department of Agriculture so we can transfer to our uh, hearing of the resolution that provides that we give the uh, excess of 10 billion na sa rice tarification to cash <laughs> assistance for the rice farmers. So uh, can you join me also in that hearing, uh, uh, senators, because we need your approval. Uh, do we log out or, out or, out or do we log out? Do we log out? Lag, magla-log out tapos? Magla-log out daw, tapos magla-log in where? Same, same login, ho? Nasa email. Uh, uh, new, I, I, I can read. New. new daw, ma'am. Alam new. nung taga ako, na taga sa Nate po. Uh, alam okay. nung okay. sa, ano, committee secretary. Me, uh, uh, ano, yung committee, committee secretary. Can you ask the committee secretary where you will log in? But I will, ano, pwede ba i-read mo kung ano para... Okay, mahirapan Then, sila. Madam Chair, okay lang ako kasi pag in-announce yun, baka kung sino-sino yung mag-log okay, in. Okay, sige, sige. Baka okay, let's okay, go na sa okay. spring okay. chair. Okay. So we transfer. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. There's a different invitation, ma'am. Uh, there's a different uh, invitation on the links to the other hearing.
expenditure program. Okay, we we acknowledge the presence of uh, again of uh, Senator Aimee. Are they all here, Senator Kiko and Senator Binay? Nandito pa ba si Senator Binay? Okay, meron siyang Aimee. Were you saying something to me before we transferred? Hindi, dadagdag ko lang dun sa joint resolution shall be automatically appropriated. Uh, so, na yun yun eh. Oo, oh, automatically okay. na lang. O oh, sige, we'll in include that. We, okay. There's no ano naman that eh. That's a committee uh -oh. report. Okay. Uh -oh. So we'll include that. Tawagan mo si Reggie para ayusin niya. Yung wordings. We will uh, do the wordings and then we will send it to you for comments para ma whatever I overlook, you will look into it so we will not be uh, hampered in the future. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Ma ma'am, pa-check lang yung uh, latest uh, Supreme Court ruling on joint resolutions. Uh, baka, dapat, baka, dapat. Eh, baka dapat batas. Uh, imbis na... Kung dadali natin sa, ano, sa floor, ano yon? Gagawin natin batas? Baka ho. Pacheck nyo na lang po sa Ay, ano. Ang problema natin noon. Yes, pagka-joint resolution. It might have so, to sa be... Sa DSWD na rice subsidy. That's uh, right. That's right. So, Kaya, we, uh, paano to? We will change it. So, pwede naman po. As long as the committee report... Natin. mag uh, uh, report na lang ako na na-decide na gawin batas. Di ba? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. For, 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 until 2025, di ba? Kasi ang gandoon yung rice ano, RTL eh. RTL. Oo, tapos yes. i-amend naman natin yun before that time comes eh. So we will just, ano, di ba? Oo. Yes, ma'am. Either that or we can probably in, uh, have a provision in the GAA. That is another option. Actually, I was going to suggest na... Uh, any amount collected in excess of the 10 billion ceiling shall be automatically, ayun na, then we can pick Sa GAA, okay. sa GAA yun o sa ating resolution? Sa GAA rin po, pwedeng, uh, uh, pwedeng habulin sa special provision po ng RCEP. Yeah. Pwede rin yun. Uh, so sa either... Eh, kayo lawyer, eh, kayo nga gumawa, hindi man ako lawyer. Oh, Sige ma'am, patulungan na ka ng Baka mas mabilis na may batas kasi madali i-convert yung joint resolution pero sa pagpasa ng budget, ipasok na natin yung special na. uh, provision yeah. din. Uh, uh, para dalawa. Pwede naman uh, yun, ma'am. So, I will call you ah, with, yes, my, ano, with my staff para gawin nyo yung how we Sige. will do it. Ha? Yes, ma'am. Ang importante, yes. nag-hearing na tayo kasi they said we have to hear it. Eh. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, yun yung hinihirit ko kanina, kaya lang uh, hindi ako nakahabol. <laughs> Oo. So, yung committee report na lang natin. Anyway, tayo naman na nag-hearing. Hindi ko ano pirmahan natin doon. Di ba? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, sige. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Mm -hmm. So, tawagan mo na si ano para mag-coordinate sa kanila. Si uh, before Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. So, we recognize uh, Secretary Dar to present the budget of BIFAR or any of his authorized uh, person. Thank you. Nakabalik na ba sila? Parang wala pa sila. Eh. Uh, dito na po kami. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so we can discuss the budget of BIFAR, okay? Opo, opo. Um, Madam Chair, just uh, the broad overview for the budgets of BIFAR and NFRDI and PFDA is flashed on your screens. Yes. Uh, yes. Ayan po. Yung pong first column uh, is a description of the amounts uh, ng last year, uh, for this year. And then uh, the second column is what we propose. Yes. The the third column is what came back. Ito po yung na-approve ng video. So ito pong third column ang nandyan po sa EP. So total for BFAR as discussed a while ago was 4.6 billion with uh, uh, an, an part. 
not including the National Fisheries Program. Iba po yan. Uh, okay, so that's what I'm asking. Uh, and then? Ay, kasama daw po. Kasama si NFS. Huh? Under na... Ayun, hindi. Ayun, no. Hindi, nahiwalay eh. Ayun, no. Iba naman, te, 2.5. Under the fisheries, fisheries sector, madam. Huh? National Fisheries Program, nakalagay separate eh. Oh. Separate, uh, it's a different amount, oh, 2.9. Or is that the total of those two items? Oh, ayan. Breakdown ata. 1.9 plus 1.6. Breakdown lang po ito. Opo. Yes. Eh, but ang total, so 4.6 at saka 5.1. Yes. And 2.90. But nag-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i
Kasi ang laki-laki. Ang laki-laki. Ang nakapagtaka. Tapos may budget pa rin. Asan yung fisheries regulatory and law enforcement? Meron rin yun eh. Dati 1.7 billion. Hindi ko na makakita. Pero ngayon nakita ko uh, nasa 800 na lang. Wala ba dyan? Uh, the, the 800 is their PS. The 800 is PS. Oo. Yeah, Madam Chair, may I be recognized po? Yes, okay. Uh, yun, yun pong uh, tungkol po sa regulatory, it's under the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. The one, uh, that's the regular mandate po. The other one... Well, you're, you're saying, about, okay, you're saying yung um, fisheries regulatory, kasama na siya sa budget na 4.6? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes po. PS, okay. eh. uh, yung 803 is PS. And then it's our MOOE. I see. Tapos the eight, yung collection niyan, saan dinadala? May provision niyan kung saan dadala, hindi nila nire-report eh. At may collection Pero, niya rin, eh, nasa 83 million ba yun? Opo, we, we, we will comply po doon sa mga inquiries, ma'am. Uh, the breakdown as to where the uh, construction project will be going under the PFDA. And number two, yun pong uh, kung saan napupunta yung collection under the regulatory function ng VFAR. Oh, okay. Mas tirit na lang, kapag binigay lahat ng perang yan, talaga bang hindi na tayo mag-import ng galunggong kailanman? At saka we Ma are going to look at that PFDA kasi ang laki-laki na in-increase. E eh baka kung saan-saan lang nila dalhin. Samantalang, yung, mga, yung mga hatcheries na mga congressman na pinasa pa nilang batas, hindi na i-implement. So maybe doon yung dadalhin some of the money kasi nakakaya, nagpakahirap na ipasang batas pa kami at saka senado tapos walang na-implement. There are 61 of them. Madam Chair, yes. ma'am, we will recast the budget po to uh, uh, include the uh, provision for the uh, new hatcheries uh, that has yeah. been uh, 18 hatcheries uh, to be exact, Madam Chair. No, no, it's 42. 42. Plus 21. Ipapasa namin yung 21 eh, napasa na yung 12 eh. Pinakukonsum lang yung lugar nung natitirang ano eh, 21 minus 12 eh. Uh, that's nine. Pinakukonfirm lang yung lugar ng nine para wala na tayong argument kasi sasabihin nyo, it's not feasible. So, ginagawa na natin feasible but I told you, on November 9, we will pass it. November, kinuha ko na yung date eh, na we will go back and pass it. So, you have 61, 60, no, 42 plus 21, 63 to build. Eh, may ilagay nyo dyan kasi nakakahiya, nagpakahirap pa kami ipasa na batas. Tapos Madam ayaw Chair? ko implement. Oh. Yes. Madam yes, Chair? yes, Madam Chair. Yeah. We, we will confer po with your uh, technical staff on this and uh, we will yeah. present 61, uh, 61 hatcheries. Buti nga mahihilig yung mga congressman sa, sa agriculture. Otherwise, nandun lahat sila sa DPWH. Oh, Madam Chair? Yes, oh, Madam yes. Chair. Yes. Madam Chair? Pwede for submission na lang ho, kasi nabanggit niya kanina, 142 fish ports yung yes, popon ko repair. nga niya. Pero for repair. But pay oh, repair no. yun. Bigyan na lang na equipment, wag na i-repair. Ano ba i-repair doon? Yung mga simentado naman yun. Nakita ko mga pictures eh. Ay, yung iba, marapi po hindi ginagamit. Oo, oh, lagyan na lang na equipment. but pa i-repair yun? Kahit mo i-repair yun, kung walang equipment yun, hindi rin magagamit yun. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. May, may I be recognized po? Yeah, yes. Yes. Uh, Madam Chair, the other fish ports po kasi is in compliance with our uh, IUUF, yung illegal, unreported, and regulated fishing. And uh, because we are exporting some of our uh, catch, But, we oh. would need po uh, very uh, reliable and... Uh, I don't think uh, it's the building that is the problem. I think it's the equipment. Doon, wang -wang lang yung cemento. Paano ninyo kukulihin? Oh. Sige, Madam Chair, we will, we will uh, ako recast po. Ako, ako po with para ka niya, puro repair. Imagine ang niya, puro repair. Kalahati, repair. Kalahati ang bago. Oh, sigurado ka ba doon sa repair na yun? Ako, hindi ako naniniwala sa repair. Bago na lamang para makita kung meron talaga. Oh, pinaltang ko yun sa niya. Gikuha akong 7.30. Oh. Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, we will confer po with your staff. Thank you. Oh. Madam Chair. So, so I Madam think you should start. Teka muna, liliwanagin ko lang dito. You have to build that 61 hatcheries. Nakakaya. Okay. Pass pa yun in 2016 yata. Eh. Wala pa kayong nagagawa. Laki-laki ng budget nyo. And then we will review this PFDA na to kung ano gagawin dito. Hindi pwede yan. Oh, tapos sabi niyo sa akin, hindi niyo magawa yung fish hatcheries kasi hindi niyo pat, uh, sa subcontract niyo pa yung study. Eh meron kayong FRDI na may 290 million budget. Hindi ba yan ano ya research? Oh. Ba't niyo pa ipasasubcontract yung yung feasibility ng fish hatcheries eh meron kayong FRDI. At saka huwag na ninyo i-distribute by congressional district. Ibigay na sa Sambuanga sa so talagang nangangailangan. They, they can ah, build in Sambuanga. Pati Sambuanga nag-request eh. Eh kasi Sambuanga, nga sila, kung na talagang may isda at may problema sa sardina, sila hindi nakakatanggap. So nag hindi pa nakakatanggap. Eh kasi Thank you po, Madam Chair. Pinasa yun sa kongreso eh. Siyempre pupunta sa akin. Ipapasa ko yun. Tatan tinatanong ko naman sila kung iyon eh kung iyon eh feasible sasabihin naman nila feasible di papasa ko tapos ngayon ano nila gawin kung ano ano sinasabi nila eh hindi tama yon kung hindi feasible di sabihin yun hindi feasible wili oh. naman yung mga congressman magpalit ng lugar eh turuan nyo lang kung saan magpapalit eh yes madam chair we, we, we will comply po madam chair with the permission of the chair Okay, uh, just, uh, Secretary yes, just, Ay, just, Senator Pangilinan. Okay. Let's say quick in, uh, inter, uh, mm -hmm. uh, interject. Um, we support this uh, call for the production or the construction of these hatcheries. Uh, mm -hmm. This actually answers in part the question of Senator Marcos about importation. Uh, very fundamental kasi yung hatcheries. Eh. Yan, yan yung pwedeng paramihin ang paramihin. At imbis uh, na, na mag import uh, yung ating mga similya, yung ating mga ano galing pa sa abroad eh. Correct. Uh, na, sana tayo ang gumagawa noon. In fact, nung 1970s, sa atin galing itong mga similya nung bangus. Uh, tapos dinala sa Taiwan, dinala sa at sila ngayon ang naging uh, matindi ang kanilang production tapos tayo ngayon ang naghahabol ng similya dahil wala tayong mga hatchery. Uh, so napaka-critical po nung uh, hatchery in uh, addressing itong uh, sufficiency in uh, in uh, seafood and fish uh, sa ating bansa uh, and that's why we support itong uh, pagtatayo nitong mga hatchery na ito so uh, we move that we review again the budget of the fishery sector uh, with the intention of them including in their budget the construction of the 21 uh, rather 63 uh multiple species hatcheries, fish hatcheries, and crab hatcheries, which was passed in Congress and the Senate, which are a provision of the law, that they be able to construct this during until 2022. So we, we have to review so that we can realign some of the budget to those fish hatcheries. Okay? Is that okay with you, Senators? Yes, yes ma'am. Aimee, yes. Senator Aimee, yes. Your... Yes, Paul. Yes, Paul. Oh, I know. So, uh, full support, Paul. Full support. Okay, so we review. Maybe they can submit another Mother. budget. Oh, Mother. That is... Yes, uh, yes. Mother. yes. Madam Chair, uh, we fully Who's support. Here? This is uh, Willie Dar, Secretary Dar. Yes. Uh, we fully support the construction of more hatcheries in the Philippines, uh, the number you have mentioned is about 63. Sana mm -hmm. po lang ang aming prayer lang ay masunod po yung uh, mga technical specifications kas kasi po ang hirap i-maintain uh, mas lalo na kung LGS po ang mag-maintain. So, ganun lang po. Uh, we need to have 30 million per hatchery na multi-species and sustaining that over the longer term will be a challenge kung hindi Sabi kaya. Sabi nila 20, ayun 30 na. Sabi nila 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Hindi po. Sabi nila 20 million basta magbibigay ang local government ng lugar. Oo. Opo, hindi kayo bibili ng lupa. Oo. Tapos ngayon 30 na. Hindi ko nga maintindihan kayo. Paiba-iba kayo eh. Anyway, uh, the local government for the information of Secretary Dar, they agree that they will follow what the BIFAR will tell them that is what is feasible. And the understanding is that you will uh, operate it for the first two years and you will Tama. teach the local government that they will take over after the second year. Oo, Opo. yung two years yung tuturuan sila how to do it and the local government will take over. At ang usapan, kung ayaw ng local government, huwag gawin. Kasi, <laughs> di ba? Ay, hindi pwede. Sinabi ko sa kanila, you have to agree and you have to mm -hmm. give the land where it will be built. Yeah. Ngayon, ang magtuturo sa kanila kung saan feasible, pi payag naman sila na Kung hindi po masato sa BIFAR, hahanap sila ng iba. ba? Payag naman sila ng ganun eh. They just want a fish hatchery in their uh, district. Oo. So, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, yes. Opo, uh, again, another prayer. Oh. Another, another prayer po, Madam Chair. Uh, with the 63 hatcheries uh, already plan to be supported to be put up next year. The total budget needed here is 1.89 billion. That's so why I'm prayer... telling them to prioritize this, remove some of them, and put it in the budget next year. Maggiboy sila do sa hatcheries. Yun ang sinasabi ko. And you, you gave 500 million in your bayanihan for hatcheries. So, kalahati na lang ay i-raise nyo. Di ba? 500 million yung naandun sa bayanihan 2? Yes, ma'am. Oh. So, eh, we need wala. still, oh. we need still, uh, what? Oh, di pawasan nyo to. Di ask mo, the Bureau of Fisheries, oh, katakot-takot to, 5 billion. Magbawas siya dyan. I-prioritize niya to. Tapos, yung mga hindi maiwan dito, di gawin niya next year. Oh. Baka hindi naman importante lahat to eh. Oh. Katulad ng Nabotis Fish Port Complex, 3 billion. Ano ba gagawin doon? Nagawa na yun eh. Ano na naman ang gagawin doon? I've been there. It's been uh, constructed. So, oh. I-modernize po yun. Oo nga. Meron ba ba Eh di, bawasan nyo. Sobra naman yung 3 billion. Kami nga sa Las Piñas, eh, senator pa ako, hindi ako nakahingi ng 3 billion eh. Hindi oh. nga ako nakahingi sa inyo eh. Maswerte naman nila. I-prioritize nyo to at ilipat nyo doon kasi I think that's good for the livelihood of the people. Oh. Hatiin nyo yung iba dito. Baka hindi naman kailangan this year lahat to. Pala, October 19, ang presentation ng PFDA. So we will expound it. Yeah. Ako, I have not, except that it was passed into law. Why will you not provide budget for it? Yung mga 63 na yun, pass in to law yun. You don't honor the law. Why are we passing laws if you don't honor the law? Madam Chair, we will comply yeah. po and we will confer po with your uh, technical staff. Yeah, Salamat you, you po. revise your budget. Uh, it's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. It's not yes, acceptable. Yes, Madam Chair. I really believe that we should honor the law. And naglagay na kayo ng 500, dadagdagan nyo lang. Eh, ang dami-dami nito eh. Oh. Ma'am? Yes, uh, Secretary, ay, Senator Pangilinan. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, on a related matter sa BIFAR, uh, may we request mm -hmm. a clarification from uh, Secretary Dar regarding the uh, revision of the guidelines setting uh, boundary uh, boundaries of municipal waters dahil uh, Ang concern ng mga LGUs, pagka na-approbahan daw itong proposed guidelines, ay up to 50% ng municipal waters ng ilang mga LGU ay mababawas at uh, mabubuksan sa commercial fishing. Uh, yes, uh, 
What is this guideline? We don't know about these guidelines. Yes, uh, Senator Kiko, as a matter of fact, that uh, there are already VMM and VMHF na talagang kinakabit na ng uh, before na rinereklamo ng ating mga officials kung bakit daw kinakabit uh, without any uh, consideration or consultation. Yung VMM, VMS are already being implemented uh, without consultation uh, with scientists or the locals. So in effect, all the uh, um, all the fishermen are in effect illegally operating since there's no proper delineation of municipal waters as Senator. Ala ko ba stated. 15 kilometers from the shore? Diba yes. municipal water is 15 kilometers from the shore? Diba yan? Meron ho silang, uh, meron ho kasi silang uh, delineation na uh, dapat daw from the inland, uh, the main uh, coastal area. Kapag ka ganun ho, uh, liliit. Uh, that's why it's really important. Hindi ba subject yan ng legislation? Bakit i-decide lang yan? Problema, ang problema ko, ko kasi, yung climate change, Uma, ayun tubig, lumiliit. So saan bibilangin yung 15 kilometers? Nalulugi tayo at yung municipal waters, kumikipot ng kumikipot. So in effect, illegal lahat ng operations ng ating fishermen. So we can pass a legislation on that uh, para mapigil yan? Pero in the meantime, ma'am, yung uh, kanilang uh, guidelines, meron kasi silang uh, guidelines sa BIFAR na uh, uh revise at uh, pinag-aaralan daw that's why we want to hear the secretary uh, okay. they have not approved it may, uh, may, we hear, may we give the floor to the secretary okay. secretary this doesn't even need legislation okay. before it just needs to clarify guidelines and update it given the state of our uh, coastal areas can, can i have the floor madam chair yes yes you have the floor okay thank you po uh Ito po ay mayroon na tayong batas. We have to follow the existing law. And uh, accordingly, there is a debate lang ito ngayon, yung archipelagic principle versus mainland oh, oh. principle. Oh. Now, if oh. we have to go by all intents and purposes, we are an archipelagic country. So, ang aking, po, ang aking position ay wala itong mainland reference that will be, be that will be put in the garbage can. Okay. That's that that's good to hear secretary because uh, yung argument ng kabila dapat mainland and therefore it opens up lumiliit yung municipal waters tapos lalaki yung commercial fishing. So kawawa yung ating small fisher group and uh, there is a direct correlation between effective uh, management of these coast, these uh, municipal waters, and poverty. If these municipal waters are effectively managed by the local government and stakeholders, poverty in the fishery sector is uh, greatly reduced. Uh, and that's why it is critical. Tama po. Salamat, salamat. Uh, uh, so, uh, Secretary Dar, can you give us a briefer on this? Para uh, people not yeah. really very familiar with the law will be uh, guided accordingly. So we will know what's happening. Sige po. Okay. Sige po. Can you give us a briefer on this so that if we have yeah. to do something, we know what we're going to do? Okay. Tama yes. po. I'd just like to support Senator Kiko's statement that in fact uh, poverty in the, in the coastal sector is almost two and a half times higher than uh, even the uh, other rural sectors. Yes ma'am, Pin pinakamahirap ma'am ang mga mangingisda natin. Uh, just to clarify uh, with the permission of the chair, uh, I, you, the newspaper articles of Philippine Daily Can Inquirer today says Agriculture Secretary has yet to decide on the resolution. Uh, he noted, this is Noel Reyes, that the Secretary had commissioned a science-based review of the proposal. So if we can get updates regarding the final decision on this matter, uh, Secretary Willie, we would appreciate it. Yeah, Madam Chair, we will do that. This is just an analysis, but my position now is
to uh, abide by, you know, we are an archipelagic country, so we, there's no debate on that issue. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that is uh, a relief to our small uh, fisher folk, uh, uh, Mr. Madam uh, Chairperson, Mr. Secretary. Marami salamat. Okay. So we uh, suspend the hearing of the uh, uh, Bureau of, Fish, uh, of the Fisheries Budget subject to a revision that we are asking them. And then we proceed to the other programs of the Department of Agriculture. Okay, thank you. We hear now on the other programs. We'll begin with the what do you we, we begin with the rice programs. If you have comment on the rice program. Um, yes. Uh, most of my, Madam Chair? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, well, most of our questions were directed towards the what we discussed uh, in the earlier hearing, uh, uh, ma'am. Uh, uh, yeah, concern yeah. So, so uh, we have uh, tackled this. So, uh, this uh, I know, yung changes that we want all everything uh, uh, beyond 10 billion to be given to rice farmers, uh, uh, rice farmers as financial assistance to rice farmers owning one hectare and below. And that is until the expiry of the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. Okay. And uh, one of my questions here, uh, if you have no question, I want to, to, so we are removing the crop diversification program of 113B to, to be used for fa fa farmers' assistance. Uh, as, uh, uh, financial assistance to rice farmers, okay? This crop diversification in the budget, okay? And... Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Pwede bang... Uh, uh, then you can revise uh, the budget where you will get that crop diversification program. Yeah. It's just that we're that, getting... Yeah, it's Tama for po. you. Oh, you just submit to us what you will... Okay. Uh, uh, get it from, but you can do a crop diversification program, pero hindi dun sa in excess of 10 billion, di ba? Tama ma'am. Gusto Tama lang po. namin ibigay yan sa rice farmer para matapos na yung malaking usapan was, sa, sa rice farmer. I was going farmer. to support that. Yes, okay. And then uh, another question is... Uh, that what I'm asking for, and I want to settle this once and for all. You submitted the uh, uh, the hybrid producing towns, so that uh, we will eliminate it from the inbred seed uh, rice producing towns. Yung gumagamit ng inbred seed iba do sa hybrid. So you have to the your program. Kasi meron kayo sa seeds na uh, malaki eh, dito sa in yung uh, rice resiliency program magkano ba yung seeds nyo dito it's uh, how much dito sa rice resiliency program yung banner program nyo ilan ang sa seeds rice the rice resiliency program uh, madam chair uh, yes thank you very much madam chair thank you very much to the senators Kasi dalawa ang nagbibigay ng seeds, yung RCEP. Ang pinamimigay nun, inbred seed. Ang budget nila doon, 3B a year. Now you have a rice resiliency program, a rice program, a banner program. You have a budget of 15 billion. So magkano ba ibibigay nyo sa seeds at ang pinamimigay nyo hybrid seeds, di ba? O, para malinaw tayo, maintindihan nila na dalawang klase ang seeds. Hybrid and... Uh, uh, inbred seed. Ang pinamimigay ng RCEP ng field rice is inbred seed kasi sila nag-discover noon. Ngayon kayo, pinamimigay nyo hybrid seed. So, nagbigay kayo ng listahan ng binibigyan nyo ng hybrid seed. Oh, so, hindi na yun isasama sa inbred seeds. Diba? Oh. So, uh, magkano ba budget nyo sa hybrid? 
Ma Madam Chair, for the hybrid, uh, the budget is uh, 5 billion 483,560. Oh, so 5 billion. So you have chosen the the places where you will give hybrid seats, in the bar. Tentatively, right, yeah. Tentatively, you said uh, it's. Uh, I listed uh, Region One, Region Two, Region Three, Nueva Ecija, Tarlac, Sambales, Region Four B, Palawan, Oriental Mindoro, Occidental Mindoro, uh, Region Seven, Region Nine, Ten, Eleven, Twelve, and Thirteen. Those are the regions you have chosen to give hybrid seeds. So, pag ito ang pinilit nyo, hindi na natin to bibigyan ng inbred seeds. Kasi kayo na magbibigyan. Right? Oo, oh, kasi ang budget lang ng inbred seed is 3 billion. You have a five, more than 5 billion budget for hybrid. Correct. What's the exact amount? The billion, what? Um, amount will be covering 1 million hectares approximately, Madam Chair, for the inbred. Oh, oh ano yung hybrid? budget nyo sa hybrid? 5 point? Uh, for the... For the seeds, ma'am, 5.483566 billion, Madam Chair. 5 point, parang 5 point, 5 point 5.483 billion, okay? Yes, Madam so, Chair. I wish we will do a list na alam nung ano ang bibigyan nila ng inbred at alam nyo rin kung ano bibigyan nyo ng hybrid kasi mas malaki naman ang budget nyo doon sa inbred seed ng RCEP. Diba? Oo. Actually, Chair, uh, we submitted the specific municipalities and public yeah, yeah, but, uh, oh, we and will I, instruction, Madam Chair, we will tag them. Kasi napansin ko lang, lahat ng malaki ang production, yun ang kinuha nyo. <laughs> is that, uh, ano, is that uh, coincidence? <laughs> Pinili nyo yung the biggest rice producing town, uh, uh, provinces in the Philippines. You chose uh, Nueva Ecija, Isabela, Pangasinan, Ah, uh, Cagayan. Oh, yun ang pinili Ma nyo eh. Oo. Ma Madam eh, Chair, tama po. Tarlac, North your... Cotabato. Pinili nyo na yung pinakamagagaling eh. <laughs> Iiwanan nyo yata sa, sa pill rice ang pinakamahihina, di ba? Is that a coincidence o tama ba yun? Ma Madam Chair, uh, hindi po siya coincidental. Meron po tayong naging basis. And in fact, we follow your instruction that those uh, that are less competitive. Okay, okay. So, we will review that and uh, we will have a final list of what will be, what uh, provinces and towns will be given by field rice ng inbred seed and what will be the provinces and towns that we will be given hybrid seeds para maliwanag tayo dyan. Another uh, is your budget for fertilizer. What is your budget for fertilizer? Dun sa Madam rice Chair, resiliency the, mo. Madam Chair, thank you very much. Po. For the hybrid, we have 3,501,230. For the R inbred cluster outside of the RCEP, we have 224,457,000. And for the RCEP inbred, for provision, we also have 2 billion can you, bring, can you submit me a breakdown of that? Kasi wala dito. Oh. We will be very happy to submit to you. And now, you know, Madam Chair, may I want, na kasi ako. tiningnan ko yung, one of my advocacy is ask the, ano, the people to produce their own organic fertilizer. And I noticed that it was a Bureau of Soil and Water Management na nag implement niya, binagsak niyo yung budget. Oh. So I want you from 1.6 billion, naging 596 million. So I want you to provide for those composters. Kasi ako naniniwala that towards the long run, we should encourage our farmer to produce their own organic fertilizer. And ang maganda dito, this is good for the soil because 38% of the soil are degraded. And ang sabi ng World Health Organization, ng World uh, Food Organization, W World Food Organization, o yung ano, FAO, Food and Agricultural Organization. How they solve the degradation of the soil? They said compost all your waste and bring them back to the soil. So I'm really uh, promoting the composting para maging magandang ating soil. But unfortunately, 
yung Bureau of Soil and Water Management, you cut the budget from 1.6 billion to 596 billion. Parang uh, two thirds of the budget were removed. Sinasadya ba to na hindi ipromote? Ma yung Madam Chair, poster? actually the department and the secretary is in line with your guidance. In fact, Madam Chair, the secretary mentioned to us that healing the soil, uh, management of the soil, and maintaining the what you call data yeah. from the soil is part of it. And as you mentioned, Madam Chair, the Secretary fully support that what they call oh. composting that uh, will be the, for the organ. Unfortunately, Madam Chair, those oh. pro that proposal of one point something billion was not given to us. Yan lang po na ibigay ng DBM, Madam Chair. Oh, eh di wala nang ano. Ipakita nyo sa akin na mag ipopromote pa rin yung composting with this budget. The budget was yes, cut Chair. into... Two, two thirds of the budget was cut. So, hindi mo pwede sabihin na pinopromote mo to, tapos ganito gagawin mo sa budget. Parang... Ma Ma Madam uh, Chair, whatever was given to us po, I wish... Abay, i-revise nyo yun tong budget na to. Eh. This is just a proposal. So, I want you to revise this budget. Hindi pwede yung ikakat nyo yung budget ng Bureau of Soil and Water Management. Eh... Eh, sinabi na nga sa atin, 38% of the soil are degraded. Tapos, eh, uh, and how do you solve the degradation of the soil? Composting. Oh, but ang dami-dami yung budget sa fertilizer, sa inorganic fertilizer. Ayon yung bigyan ng chance yung organic fertilizer na mag-improve mag, uh, mag, uh, sa bansang ito. Parang mali naman yun. Eh, samantang Madam hindi Chair. naman popular yung fertilizer na yan. Palaging may fertilizer scam. Oh, eh di ba wasa nyo yan na encourage nyo yung mga tao na gumawa ng sarili nilang fertilizer para nababawasan ang fertilizer scam? Yes, Madam Chair, we will tapos Gusto po. Gusto nyo ba? Po. Alam nyo, ako talaga, ang dam na nagalit sa akin na hindi ko inimbestiga yung fertilizer scam. Eh kasi sabi ni Digong, eh okay na daw yun. Oh, kaya hindi na ako kumibo. Pero pala, lahat tuwing magbibili ng fertilizer may scam. Tapos, hindi na nga kami nakibo, babawasan nyo pa yung aming composting. <laughs> eh, ito, maganda to kasi mag improve ang quality of the soil, uh, libre na ang fertilizer kasi ang mga farmer matututong gumawa ng sarili nilang fertilizer. And this is good for waste management. Mababawasan yung problema natin sa waste management. Kami kasi sa aming bayan, sa Las Piñas, we recycle... Uh, how many? Uh, 80% of our waste. Uh, and 50% of that are organic fertilizer, yung biodegradable. Oh. So, yung, yung expenses ng aming bayan para magtapo ng basura, nabawasan ng 80%. Two-thirds. 75%. Oh. Three-fourths. Oh. Yes, Madam Chair. Ba't ayaw nyo niyan? Ba't ayaw nyo niyan? Ma'am, we will follow po and on top of the what they call Bureau of Soils, meron din po kaming ibang provision sa National Organic Agriculture, Madam Chair. Eh, hindi nila yun. sa Bureau of Soil yun eh. Kasi nga, pinag-iwahiwalay nyo budget, hindi na namin makita eh. Litong-lito na kami eh. Oh. Okay, Madam Chair, we will, we will and we will adjust. Madam. You show this. Hindi, hindi po eh dito. Mag-revise tayo ng budget dito. Kawawa naman yung Bureau of Soils. Siya na nga lang ang naggagawa ng organic fertilizer. Eh, two-thirds pa ng budget, inhalis nyo. Siguro hindi popular sa inyo. Mas gusto nyo yung bumili ng inorganic fertilizer. Oh, we will adjust, palagi Madam naman kayo na i-scam doon, but gustong-gusto nyo yun. Yes, Madam Chair. So, that's one of the changes that we want in the budget. Yung mag-provide ng pagbili ng composter to be distributed distributed by the Bureau of Soil and Water Management. And then we will uh, revise the BIFAR budget so that uh, the hatcheries, in uh, the legislated hatcheries will be implemented. Okay. And then, uh, okay. And then we will, dis we will be able to disaggregate yung mga towns na bibigyan ng hybrid seeds at yung mga towns na bibigyan ng inbred seeds. Uh, can you list it down so you will not forget? So we will not uh, endorse the budget without these changes, okay? And you are right, Madam Chair, just to inform the body, it is the instruction po na ng Secretary other than tagging, lahat po ng nasa program po natin ng RCEP, they will be actually uh, executing mo what to ask.
trust that within the duration of the program they will not be shifting with the actual program po madam chair okay so another would be the next uh so are there any question in the rice program uh from the senators so we will move on to the other programs we'll chair, go to chair, that madam chair. yes uh, madam chair secretary yes. i senator kiko yes Yes, on the rice program, um, uh, just a question, uh, Secretary. Uh, uh, if, with your permission, ma'am? Yes, yes, yes. You go ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Secretary Willie, uh, itong March 2020, sabi ng NEDA na silang expectation na bababa na ang uh, presyo ng bigas sa merkado. In fact, ang figurang sinabi nila ay 34 pesos per kilo this year. It in 2020. And this was said in March 2020. So far, ang, uh, August to September 2020, retail prices ng uh, well milled at uh, regular milled ay pumapalo ng anywhere between 42 pesos of well milled at 37 at 38 pesos per kilo uh, sa regular. Uh, sa pag-aaral ho ba ng uh, NFA at ng uh, inyong tanggapan, Secretary, uh, you projected decrease sa retail prices ng rice basis sa rice application. Kailan ho natin maaabot yun? Uh, based on the NEDA uh, 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 findings as well as your own uh, uh, secretary. Opo, gan this is the monitoring that have been done in regard to monthly retail prices of regular regular mill rice from uh, 2017 up until August of 2020, Madam Chair, Senator Kiko. Noong uh, 2017, ang uh, presyo ng bigas then ay nasa 38 pesos per kilo. Ito yung regular mill rice. Tapos nung Agosto, September, Oktobre ng 2018, di ba, may kakulangan. So umakyat sa 45.57 pesos average. Now from mm -hmm. there, marami ng pagbaba ng uh, rice prices. At uh, nung uh, end of 2019, ay nasa, nasa 30... 6.16 pesos. Now, dito ang latest average po by August this year ay 37.84 uh, pesos. Now, if you look at the whole uh, reduction, bumaba talaga significantly as a result of the rice tarification law. Mm -hmm. Although, uh, as you said, noong 2019, uh, 2018, it was 45. Before that, it was 37. So, in other words, noong 2018, before the rice crisis, uh, it was almost the same figure as now, uh, 37 pa rin. So, it still has to go down, hindi po ba? Kasi to, bumaba siya dahil sumobra nga ang taas noong 2018. Pero kung ikukumpara natin sa 2017 prices, uh, hindi pa siya masyadong malayo. Bumaba ng kaunti, pero hindi yun sa expected ng uh, NEDA. Uh, at syempre, nung ating uh, economic managers. Uh, how do we bring it down to 34, for example? Uh, ano, ang, uh, ano ang inyong uh, formula uh, in terms of the production side and the, the supply side? The formula, Mr. Chairman, is RCEP. So the next five, six years more, ay sana very competitive na and very productive ng mga rice farmers natin para sa ganun ay mas uh, magampanan pa rin natin yung being competitive at mas mababa na ang presyo ng bigas sa merkado. Yes, and uh, earlier nabanggit ninyo, ang landed cost ng imported rice ngayon ay 20 pesos. Uh, ang ating uh, per kilo ng... Uh, Per kilo yon 20 pesos per kilo, landed cost ng imported rice. Ang bentahan natin ng regular milled rice ngayon ay 37 pesos. So ibig sabihin, yung imported, uh, halos 100% ang patong uh, at kikita sa 
pipinasok niya ng 20 pesos, uh, that's what we are competing with, hindi po ba, Secretary? Yung ganong klaseng landed cost uh, hmm. per kilo. Yan ang ating... Uh, yes. Mother, Madam Chair, let me make some clarifica uh, clarification here. Okay. Yung landed ay hindi pa nakasama yung logistics at saka yung uh, taripa. So, isuma, uh, il, il, idagdag lahat po yun, nasa 27, 28 po. But landed, yes, uh, yes. Oh. I, I would like to add, because if you compute that our, our cost of producing rice in the Philippines is 12, then you you divide by 0.65. Kasi, di ba, pag minil mo at ginawa mo rice, you will uh, mawawala yung 35%. Parang lalabas yun 23-24, di ba? Mm -hmm. uh, 12 divided by 0.65 yata is 24. Or hindi, yung bili natin, halimbawa 15, 17 times 0.65 is, kasi ang tubo is yes. uh, 17. Kasi kung may 5 pesos, 5 pesos na tubo yung farmer, 17 divided by 0.65 is... Uh, uh, ano yan eh, 25. So, mas mahal pa rin doon sa landed cost. Diba? Yes, at yung, yung landed cost kasama yung freight. Oo. So, it's okay. So, talaga oh. ang intention natin, ibaba yung 12 to something like 8 or 7. Para po. pag pag pag, ben, pag kahit sumubo sila at uh, dinibay uh, minil into rice, pareho pa rin tayo sa Vietnam. Diba? Para hindi na worth it na mag- import. Kundi dito na lang bibili sa atin kasi competitive na tayo. The intention of the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund is to bring the cost of producing rice to 8 or 7. Yes. Oh, hindi naman kailangan pumareho tayo sa Vietnam. Ang Vietnam is 6. Ang Thailand is 8. Basta 7 or 8 okay na tayo kasi we can sell the, the, the palay at a lower cost pero same ang income and then mumura ang bigas. ba? Yun ang intention ng Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. But of course, it will take time to be in effect. Kaya we'll giving them six years. In the meantime, lahat ng uh, excess tariff, ipamigay na lang natin na uh, na cash assistance to them to tide them over until maging competitive sila. Diba? Yun ang intention of the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. Okay. Madam Chair. Ma Ma if Madam I may Chair. just add one, if I may just add one, uh, one uh, si uh, scenario, ma'am. Ito, paano nakatipid yung pamalang lokal sa Pampanga dahil sila mismo ang bumili ng palay sa mga magsasaka at 19 pesos, ibig sabihin eh, mas mataas ng dalawang piso, tapos sila ang gumiling, sila ang nagmil, at dahil sila ang nagmil, nakatipid pa sila nung uh, dami nung, uh, nung uh, benta ng bigas kasi mas mura sa, sa paggiling nila kaysa sa wet market. To, and in the end, nakadagdag pa sila ng tatlong kilo per family ng ayuda ng bigas kasi nakatipid sila. Ganun ho ang mangyayari. Kapag uh, fully operational na ho yung competitiveness enhancement fund at tama yung support, oh. talagang babag Kasi, presyo. Kaya tumataas uh, dahil mas malaki ang kita nung, nung private kaysa sa public, di ba? Oo. Yun kaya po. tumataas. Yun oo, oo, oo. Kasi Yun may effect pa rin topic. yung cartel. May effect pa rin yung cartel, di ba? Hindi pa natin nakaalis. Oo. Uh, hindi ba, hindi commensurate yung bagsak ng presyo ng palay dun sa bagsak ng presyo ng uh, uh, bigas. Kasi malaki pa rin ang kita nung kart, yung uh, trader. Yun ang, trader. Yun ho, oh, ang oh, hindi natin talaga. Kaya it's really a struggle na yung trader ay makontrol natin. Uh, they Tama will po. price rice at a reasonable price. Kumikita naman sila na sobrahan lang yung kita nila. <laughs> Sobra yes. lang. Apo. Hmm. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for that clarification, Secretary. Maraming salamat, uh, Madam Chairperson. Madam Chair, natanong na ba yung ACPC? 
Ano, sige, magtanong ka, Amy. Yung... Hindi po kasi yung ACPC was budgeted 2.6 billion for loans. Eh, wala naman tayo nakikitang breakdown o kung ano yung mga allocation for each program. At uh, kasama dyan yung sikat saka ni uh, Senator Kiko. Eh, ano ba talaga itong mga credit programs? So, Abala po ako dito kasi yung um, ACPC, kasama yata dyan yung expanded sure aid na pinasok rin sa Bayanihan 2 at may karagdagan pang 2.5B. Okay ba yung mga programang yan? Hindi pa natin nakikita yung performance ng uh, loan portfolio ng mga yan. Madam okay. Chair, Madam Chair. Okay. okay. Yes. Can I, can I answer, Mr. Madam Chair? Yeah, tama po na yung 2.5 billion na budget ng ACPC this year ay uh, kasama dun sa parte ng social uh, amelioration support program natin dito sa COVID. At ang ganda po ng uh, programa na ito, ang dalawang aspeto ang pinupunduhan, yung mga marginalized farmers and fisher folk na pautang ay 25,000, zero interest at payable in 10 years. The other component is for these micro and small enterprises. So ang ganda po, uh, this is one of the more popular loan programs ng, uh, ng uh, gobyerno and that's why we are continuing it under Bayanihan 2. Yes, our concern was, anong performance niyan? Nagbabayad ba yan? Well, bago po lang, this is just a new program. And uh, for previous programs, we will submit, Madam Chair, uh, the performance of uh, all the ACPC uh, programs. Yeah, perhaps we could get more information, request for information na lang, Madam Chair, kasi hindi pa natin naririnig. Ano yung breakdown dyan? Maraming nakalista yan. Yung expanded sure, sure aid, capital access, sikat saka, agrarian product, etc., etc. So if uh, you can just see the breakdown. May we move we'll that the uh, Department of Agriculture will submit uh, a briefer on all this uh, credit program of the Department of Agriculture that yes, will uh, include everything. Oh, sige. Opo. Okay. Maraming salamat. Isama na rin ninyo. Nakatanggap na ba kayo ni isang kusing pa ba sa Bayanihan 2? Uh, wala pa po. Wala Wala pang dumarating eh. Eh mag-expire na yan December 19, di ba? December 19. Wala pa raw dumarating sa DA. Nakasubmit po pero wala pang dumating po. Uh, siguro yung isa pang tanong ko sa Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority. Kasi ang uh, sinasabi ng uh, Sinag at yung iba't iba pang uh, farmers group sa Region 1 and 2 dito sa atin, Apo uh, Secretary, Eh, yung overpricing, marami pa silang mga resibo at ang sabi nila, hindi daw yung agriculture ang naribot, ang naribot daw yung fertilizer scam. Ano po ang uh, ginawa ng DA tungkol dyan? Naimbestiga na ba yan? Dahil may budget na, na naman na i-release eh. Madam, Madam Chair, and... 6.4 billion. 6.4. Yeah, Madam Chair, let me answer Madam Chair briefly. Walang katotohanan na may corruption, walang irregularidad at lahat po yung documents sa intact at uh, mas ngayon ay mas mababa na yung mga fertilizers. Ang detalya si Ariel Yusek. Yung, yung benta po kasi at yung mga resibo ng pagbenta, mas mataas yung pagbili di hamak ng uh, DA kesa sa pagbili namin dito ng retail na tingi-tingi. Kaya nagtataka po kami. Madam Chair, number one po. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, for recognizing. Number one po, ang naging basis po natin ng ating ceiling price or ABC are the average prices taken from the authority which is no other than it. Per month po yun. para mas surgical po tayo. Number two, we drill down, hindi lang po region hanggang probinsya po. And lastly, everybody was invited, all the suppliers to participate and so many times eh, nag-fail po siya kasi nga po ay hindi po pumapasa. And lastly, Madam Chair, ibinaba na po natin sa mga 
munisipyo tsaka po sa probinsya and all they have to do is just to reimburse ay ganun pa rin po ang mga presyong lumalabas madam chair. But hindi na lang uh, uh, I want to recommend Uh, bakit uh, uh, I want to recognize na unmute ko na mute ko I want to recognize Sec Senator Subiri uh, you can ask question after this uh, uh, um, I just want to ano but hindi nyo i-up na lang yan ha? voucher na lang uh, ang ibibigay nyo hindi na fertilizer Mag uh, recognize kayo ng supplier tapos you give voucher parang ganun ang gina ginawa na rin sa seeds eh na hindi na physical distribution kundi voucher na lang para mas madali sa mga farmer at sigurado uh, but hindi nyo i-computerize yan na ibigay na lang na something uh, that they, they can claim Madam Chair, that's, that is now the ongoing way to distribute we have now used the uh, digitalization technology ma'am wala nang bidding-bidding DBP handles that So mm -hmm. lahat po wala nang uh, wala nang uh, kalukuhan talaga walang wala. Sana i ano niyo i ano niyo yan kasi palagi na lang issue yan eh. 'Di ba yung fertilizer palaging issue yan. Oo, oh, oh. relic na po. Kung maari, hingi lang ako ng investigative report ninyo kasi ang papeles po na binigay ng mga magsasaka sa amin ng sinag, ng iba't ibang grupo eh ganyan din kadami. Sana may pansagot rin kami. Opo, okay. we will give you all everything. Okay. So we recognize our majority floor leader Mick Subiri to ask questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, um, unang-una, magandang umaga, Madam Chair. Magandang umaga sa aking mga kasamaan, Senator Kiko and Senator Aimee. As well as uh, Secretary Dar, good morning po. At sa mga kasamaan mo sa po. department, good morning, sir. Um, good morning po. On the onset, of course, I'd like to say uh, that I'm fully supportive of the budget to the DA. Uh, there are just some pressing concerns that I would like to take up, especially sa ating mga magsasaka. Who are really struggling now, sec? Mejo hirap na hirap sila. As I mentioned to you the last time, uh, the plummeting prices of their produce. I'm sure na take up na ng ating mga kasamahan yung sa palay. Uh, we, we have, uh, yes. Sen Senator Subiri, we have passed a resolution that everything uh, beyond 10 billion sa, rice, sa tariff collection will be given as financial assistance to all farmers owning one hectare and below. Tama yun. That's a very so, good idea. Uh, uh, ngayon na. Chairman. It's ano na. Uh, parang forever until 2025. Para hindi natin every time na, na meron magpapas ng resolution. Palalagay natin na parang batas na it will be given as financial assistance to rice farmers. Okay. Sana ma-implement talaga ma'am. Alam mo naman, magagaling yung idea natin. Pero <laughs> no, pagdating no, no, sa implementation... We will try to implement this time kasi may sobra ng 3 billion eh. So okay. we will implement by December sana. Pagtulungan natin na ma-facilitate yeah. ma na ma-implement by before Christmas. Oh, oh, para naman pag-ikot po natin, Madam Chairman, may magsasabi talaga na, ako oh, nabigyan ako ng ayuda galing okay. sa pondong iyon. Kasi okay. so far wala pa po akong uh, napapakinggan. Nagbigay na sila before. Complaints. Pero before this happened, I yes. think ano, in 2019 meron. Pero ngayon, we'll give another. Uh, That's why we're thankful that we have champions like yourself together with Senator Kiko who really fight for the rights of and the uh, the needs of our uh, uh, rice farmers. We really thank you for that. I'm here actually now speaking on behalf of the corn farmers. Kami naman ay dito sa Bukid Non. Alam mo naman, uh, Secretary, uh, Bukid Non is one of the largest producers of corn. Uh, Ka, ka ano namin na ka kompetensya namin ang uh, ang uh, Isabela uh, we also have a big rice uh, corn producing uh, uh, industry in Bukidnon and I uh, remember I reached out to you one time uh, secretary about the uh, importation of um, feed wheat uh, the importation of feed wheat which actually drastically brought down the price of corn um, Yung dried corn, umaabot na ng 9 pesos. Can you imagine? 9 pesos per kilo. Uh, Napakababa. Meron pang 8 pesos per kilo. Ano na po yan? Ha? MC14. That's a moisture content 14. That's already feed grade. 
uh, uh, napaka baba and uh, um, I remember I recall sending you the details. Uh, meron na ba tayong nagawang mga hakbang uh, sec para matulungan natin yung mga corn farmers for the record po kasi uh, alam mo I'm in Bukidnon now I mean kagayan Bukidnon boundary I'm, I'm actually going to be in Bukidnon to meet with General Galvez uh, Secretary Galvez on Tuesday for the IATF briefing on the increase on COVID uh, uh, cases in Northern Mindanao so every time I go home po the media there the local media pati yung farmers groups they ask me uh, sir, anong maitutulong niyo po sa amin? Napakabagsak ang presyo ng uh, mais dito sa amin. At uh, kawawa, because there's a bumper crop. We have a very good crop now. Uh, maraming uh, nakaani ng uh, record number. Pero yung presyo, bagsak naman po. Wala naman po silang merkado. Ano? Uh, do we have any steps, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, but uh, Sir Secretary, on what we can do for them? Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Uh, Senator Meigs, uh, can I be given the floor? Yes, please, sir. Please, sir. Go ahead, Paul. Madam Chair, uh, let me highlight yung mga measures or actions taken in connection with the uh, falling prices of corn. Uh, nasabi ko na yata last time na mayroong kaming ugnayan with the Philippine Association of Feed Millers that represent around 70% of the country's feed millers and they continue to buy uh, local produce of corn up until now. By this time, they may have already bought about 200,000 metric tons of corn. On top of that, mayroon rin kaming ugnayan with San Miguel Corporation at nakabili na po rin sila ng 400,000 metric tons of corn. Now in the uh, another measure po I uh, the other day we we had the Land Bank uh, Board of Directors meeting at uh, prinopos ko po doon yung uh, uh, opening of a credit facility for corn buying uh, by the provincial governments or even any LGU for that matter at aprobado na po ito. So this is one new facility that the corn farmers in the future can access to. Yung mayroon ng, I mean, I, I mean the provincial and municipal governments can now access the loan program from DBP to buy more corn. Now, in relation to the uh, feed wheat importation vis-a-vis -vis, uh, yellow corn, mayroon, na, mayroon kami ng na institutionalized na management uh, strategy not to really uh, bring feed wheat during the main harvest of corn. There are two main harvests during the year. And so uh, that management strategy is now put in place. Now, I'm happy to hear, Secretary, before you proceed, I'm happy to hear that. Kasi, uh, ano lang naman yan, common sense lang yan, Secretary, sa, sa, sa atin, no? because it's, uh, it's actually market-driven. So when we harvest, definitely there'll be a bumper crop. Pag mag-import po tayo, talagang bagsak ang presyo. So, tama yun, Sec. I'm glad that you imposed that. Uh, and I hope that we can follow through with that with your... Uh, the importers, they can't import without the permits coming from the Bureau of Plant Industry. Eh. So, isang sabi mo lang yan, Secretary, monitor natin. Hindi na, hindi na sila maka-import at that time, eh? at that particular time. I'm not against, averse totally on importation. Pero yung timing lang, you're absolutely correct on the timing. Can we have the assurance like, that uh, you'll instruct the, 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 the BPI on that? I, I will definitely and personally monitor this. Uh, Thank you very much, Madam Secretary. Chair and Senator Meigs. Now, on top of that, on top of that, uh, mayroon tayo rin out of Bayanihan to cash and uh, food assistance na ang kasama dito po ay uh, corn farmers, the uh, uh, fisher folk at uh, 
ang kasama doon sa cash and financial assistance ano cash and food assistance ay 3000 cash yung 2000 bibili, bibigay in the form of rice and the 1000 ay ibibigay in the form of chicken or eggs so that ma-prop up din yung industry natin so kasama po sila sa ayuda ito yung mga corn farmers So marami pong ang uh, the way forward in the next year po ang gagawin po natin talaga yung clustering and organizing them into cooperatives para Tama po yan sir, mas, tama po yan. Opo. And and putting up of the uh, corn processing facilities pag naorganisa na po itong mga uh, corn farmers. Yun po asa po kayo na ganun po ang direct namin. Can I have can I have that written lang secretary to my office? Pwede yung mga hakbang na binanggit mo parang i-comprehensive natin, comprehensive uh, lineup of uh, measures for the corn farmers. Kung okay lang sec, you can write our office or write the secretary or the chairman of the committee para sa ganun meron din po ako kay sagot uh, sa mga nagtatanong sa akin whenever I go around Mindanao. At least I can tell them the steps that the DA is taking. Parang ako na yun, ako na rin ang naging spokesperson mo sec. So, maganda, maganda makatulong din po ako kaysa wala po tayong maisagot. Mas maganda na officially uh, it is all written down uh, to the chairperson so that we also can be guided and follow through no, later on eventually. Okay lang, sir? We, we will do that, Madam Chair, Senator Migs. Uh, by all means, we'll do that. Thank you very much, Secretary. I'll wait for that. Uh, I'll, I'll wait for that. Also, uh, going to another industry that uh, is very, very uh, prevalent in uh, Mindanao are the poultry growers and the uh, hog raisers. I mentioned that also in our last hearing. Uh, um, again, no, it's uh, unscrupulous traders who uh, do technical smuggling. Uh, and I know in, in one of the hearings you mentioned that, no, na tinanong po ni Chairman Villarian, at ang banggit mo sa kanya, talaga napakahirap minsan mag-monitor nitong technical smuggling. Ang nangyayari kasi, uh, of course, the poultry and hog racers are complaining of low prices because of import dumping. So, ang nangyayari, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with this uh, setup, the illegal imports no, compete with our local chicken by, for example, mechanically debone po siya, Madam Chair, no? Chicken oh, meat is actually allowed to be imported by food processors kung gagawa po sila na parang Uh, uh, luncheon meat, na local, ganyan. Pwede po ipasok yung uh, mechanically debone chicken. However, uh, ang nangyayari, ang scrupulous importers, hinahalo po nila ng imported choice cuts and uh, uh, imported uh, choice meat cuts tapos declared as debone for processing. So nangyayari itong meat cuts, makikita nyo po yan sa mga malalaking grocery, malalaking supermarket. Of course, they evade taxes, tariffs, duties. In the end, yung poultry producers po natin at hog producers and other livestock growers are prevented from selling larger volumes uh, to household consumers and food processors because of this uh, technical smuggling. Uh, kawawa naman po. Uh, in other countries, they protect their industries. You cannot do that in the United States. It is next to impossible to bring in. Kasi tinanong ko din yung mga producers dito, eh, local But ayaw naman natin mag-import na mag-export. Sabi nila, pagdating naman dun sa uh, ibang bansa, napakahigpit din po ang phytosanitary permits. Ang Amerika po talaga, no hindi, mo, hindi mo maibibenta ito mga uh, produktong ito sa kanila mga merkado. At tayo naman, we're being dumped, no? illegally dumped by these uh, uh, products. Sek, ano po mga hakbang na magagawa po natin para dyan? Kawawa naman po. You know, Bukidnon is home of hundreds of uh, poultry producers and uh, uh, they're employing tens of thousands of my uh, uh, kababayans, no? my, my province mates. Not only Bukidnon, pati Batangas, pati uh, uh, Misamis Oriental, pati... Uh, Ilocos meron, pati Central Luzon, napakarami. Tat natamaan na sila ng ASF, tapos they have to deal pa with technical smuggling. Ano pong mga steps na ginagawa po natin? Sec? Para at least masagot ko din because they write me on a weekly basis uh, asking me for help. Madam Chair, uh, Senator Migs, 
Uh, alam ninyo kung smuggling yan ay talagang ang hirap sugpuin at it needs the whole of nation approach and uh, we are always there nandyan naman ang mga tao hadamin kung ibibigay lahat yung manifest ay arrival manifest ay magagampanan po namin na ma-inspect lahat yan mas lalo na ito ay yung may import clearances ang hirap yung walang dokumento. So th that's the hardest uh, thing to do. Uh, I don't know. I have no bullet answer for technical smuggling. But uh, kung smuggle sa akin, very simple policy, confiscate. Kung, uh, kung, kung walang dokumento, confiscate palagi ang aming response. Kasi uh, that, that's really smuggling. So ganun lang po ang... Ang ginagawa po namin. Number two, sana din pagbigyan kami ng kunting uh, budget sa uh, intelligence. Wala kaming uh, intelligence against anti-smuggling budget. Eh, mayroon kaming intelligence pero walang budget. Ba't hindi kayo maglagay ng budget sa inyong intelligence? Opo, We it's it's a matter of prioritizing. Eh. Alam mo, I never believed na uh, uh, malaking budget. It's the way you use your budget. Are you using your budget efficiently? That's the question. Oo. Hmm. Kasi hindi naman tayo pwede hingi ng hingi ng budget kasi alam nyo naman may problema rin tayo na uh, may recession tayo, hindi malaki ang available funds natin. But how we will use the budget is ano, but hindi mo na lang i-allow yung importation ng mechanical deboned uh, ano, sa mga processor, hindi pwede yung trader. Kasi I think yung mga processor hindi sila mag smuggle kasi may mga name na mga kumpanya yan eh. Pero yung mga trader ang mag-i-smuggle. Mag, mag so why not uh, limit it to the processor, di ba? Kasi kung processor ka naman na kumikita ka sa business mo, hindi mo gagawin yung ano, mag-i-smuggle ng ibang bagay, dadalhin mo sa market. I mean... <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Madam Chair, no? tama po yung sinabi mo. Kasi kung kukuha pa sila, bibigyan po yung permit sa trader... Oh, yung trader, oh, magte-technical smuggling yan. Oh, Bibigyan oh, sa processor. Pero yung processor, oh, oh. kasi ang income nila na gagaling doon sa processing nila, hindi sila magte-technical smuggling diba, to earn smuggling. more. As a trader? Hindi po sa processor. Okay, ma'am. Uh, we will uh, strengthen yung pamimigay ng import clearance sa, sa processor. Uh, oh, oh. consolidate that to the processor's Oh, yes. sa mga trader kasi yung trader kikita na sila mag-supply sa processor kukita pa sila on the side pero kung processor yon ano naman ang ano nila na magsa-sideline pa sila sa pagte-technical smuggling parang lalo na yung mga main processors natin they, they really make money on yeah. their business not sure. in in doing technical smuggling so kikita nyo yung pagbibigay ng permit yung business permit kasi Katulad nun, bibigay sa mga, mga, ano, mga cooperative. Tapos eh, hindi naman yung mga cooperative ang ano, front lang sila doon sa mga trader. Siguro yung mga blacklisted trader, yun ang pinofront yung mga cooperative. Eh, Pag-igihin nyo yung pagpili ng trader, yung mga naglulukong trader na nagpapahirap sa atin, huwag nyo nabigyan ng i-blacklist nyo yun. We will do that. Kayo. Ba't kaya mo, Secretary, yung BPI mo, na hirap na hirap na tayo, lahat na lang nagko-complain eh. Ba't pa tayo pinahihirapan ng ganyan, di ba? Oo oh, nga, ma'am. Actually, oh, nagawa na po natin. Sec, nagawa na po natin yan sa sugar industry, di ba? Sa sugar industry, oh. nag direct importing na. We allow direct importation to Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, oh. and allocations from abroad. So, yun na lang siguro pwede natin gawin kaysa ibigay po natin sa mga traders. Tama po si uh, Chairperson Villar kasi nalalabas po eh, nalalabas po nila eh. Uh, at yan ang nakakahinayan nakaka, uh, ng loob. Actually, Sec, um, if you have your people, just inspect. And I agree with you, Sec, ha? I will make a motion later on na dagdagan yung intelligence funds ninyo para pwede po kayo, you can strengthen your inspection service Kasi if you go to the big groceries, the big, big ones, I will not anymore name names kasi 
uh, para wala na tayong problema, inspeksyonin niyo lang po yung mga yung mga hita, yung mga paa, yung mga pecho, imported lahat. Ah, uh, hindi na hindi dapat po ni ibenta. Po imported, dapat processor lang po 'yan para hindi na makawawa yung ating mga uh, producers ng ng uh, the Davao region, the Ilocos region, Central Luzon, nako, and of course uh, Northern Mindanao. So, ito sec, I have a copy here. You, we have to be very careful because this is like a certification. I think I sent this to your email, to your WhatsApp. Certification of Meat Inspection of Imported Meat for Domestic Distribution. Ito po ay galing sa National Meat Inspection Service. This is to certify that the following meat importer, uh, Atkins import and export from Belgium, eh, is found apparently fit for human consumption. Ito po ay mga drumlets, wings, drumstick. Ito po ay... Dapat ay dapat para sa ano para sa processor di ba pero itong naipapasok po nila na ilalabas po at binebenta sa mga wet markets at ibinebenta po sa mga grocery kawawa naman po ang ating mga producers uh, sex so i am with you i know that your capability of inspecting kasi as you said technical smuggling could be a, a result of uh, the Bureau of Customs uh, uh, not maybe doing their job enough. Pero madali lang po yan. Pag nahanap po ito mga produktong ito, sec, that are being sold in these uh, markets, illegally sold yun, that means they're technical smuggling. At the very we least, they're paying that. the right taxes. We and will then, do that, blacklist uh, them, blacklist them, di ba? Opo, opo, opo. we will. Bigyan ng import permit. To. And then, tingin ko pinaka-safe yung mga processor, yun ang bigyan ng import permit. Kasi hindi nila business yung mag-smuggle. Sila, kailangan lang nila raw material sa kanilang kumpanya. We will hindi. do that immediately. We will do yeah. that immediately po. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sek. Ano lang Sorry, naman po, Sek, po. hindi po to. Sek, hindi po to criticism. Ha? Tulong lang ito. We're just here to help kasi whenever we go around, Siyempre kami din ang... We are always open, Opo. we are always open, Madam Chair, Senator Migs. Lahat po ng uh, ideas ninyo magaganda, we will implement. Thank you, thank you, Sec. Tulong lang na po ito, we're just trying to help. Uh, we want to improve the the uh, DA. You know, that's DA is very close to my heart. Uh, as I said, the last uh, hearing, uh, we're all agriculturists at heart. Um, yung finally, Mr. Madam Chair, uh, finally... Unless gusto pumasok po si Senator Bong, but, uh, pero mabilis Madam po Chair, po. Madam I could Chair, finish yes, lang my yes, yes. time of questioning. Madam Chair, with the permission of Sen. Mix, kadugtong lang nung usapin sa smuggling. Opo. Uh, uh, Madam, Madam Chair and Sen. Mix, siguro ang nagiging isang problema din kasi hanggang ngayon wala pang napakukulong na ano, eh, big time hmm. smuggler. Kaya siguro talagang hindi sila natatakot dahil alam nila they can get away with it. Yeah, yeah. So siguro yeah. kailangan yun yung isa natin tutukan na dapat may masample na naman tayo whether it's rice or galunggong yeah. or corn. Dapat Agree. talaga uh, uh, makita na nasusunod yung batas. Hindi ba na nakuli na si ano, hindi pa rin na prosecute si ano, yung rice smuggler, si Banggay. Hindi hmm. ba? Hindi rin, wala rin nangyari, di ba? Banggayan. Banggayan. Uh, I think Senator Go would also like to respond uh, before yes. I move to another topic. Yeah, yeah. Senator Bong, you want to say something before I move to another topic? Can I recognize Senator Bong Go? Okay. Madam Chair, kumusta na yung mga smuggler uh, secretary dar? Yung sa sila bangayan. Di ba hinahanap ni Pangulo yun? <laughs> Buhay pa yun? Buhay pa ba? <laughs> Buhay pa ba? Uh, may Senate hearings na, na, na naganap noon pa si Madam Chair yata pa nag-chair. So, eh, na, nagpunta na, na, na sa DOJ yun eh. Wala na sa amin eh. Endorsed to DOJ eh. Oh, Sinabihan oh, pa nga ako na huwag ka na mag-hearing na mag-hearing. Pag pumunta yan sa DOJ, wala rin mangyayari. <laughs> Patunayan mo, Secretary Dar, ubusin mo mga yan. Hmm. Dapat may Maraming masampulan, Sen Bong. Uh, Alam mo, Sen Bong, dapat talaga may masampulan na smuggler para matakot sila. Ubusin mo yan. Patunayan mo, Secretary Dar, with the uh, one year and uh, eight months na lang po natitira sa Presidente. Patunayan mo yan. With, with, your, with your help, Madam Chair, Senator Bong, Senator Mix, we will do that. Busin natin. That could be your legacy, Sec. Actually, that could be your legacy when you when the term of the President ends. 
na meron talaga nakasuhan na smuggler during the time of Senate of uh, President Digong Duterte. I think that would be a very good legacy under your watch also sa DA. You would be heavily applauded by everyone. I promise you, sir. Well, uh, we cannot do the job alone. I have mentioned that. Ang nandyan nakatuka na equally important na partner po natin ay Bureau of Customs. Ay, yun po, dapat tulong-tulong po kami lahat. Yes. Siguro tulungan na lang ni Sen Senator Bong si follow up sa kay Secretary uh, sa DOJ. Secretary DOJ. Maynard. Sa DOJ na yan. Eh. Kay Secretary Maynard San Bong, baka pwede nang sa fiscal level mapailan na ng kaso. At least man lang, hindi, kung hindi makulong, mapailan na ng kaso. Para at least sila po ay matutu maka mabigyan ng leksyon. Tuluyan natin, Secretary. Tuluyan natin. Yung tayong law na yung, yung pinasa namin yung batas na yon no, agricultural smuggling is economic sabotage and unbailable. Yes. O, merong, may batas tayong gano'n na napasa namin yon noong time na, noong last Congress. Agricultural smuggling is economic sabotage and non-bailable. Kaya mapailan lang ng kaso, hindi na pwedeng i walang walang ban, walang bail, walang bail, nakakulong hanggang maka-clear sa kaso. At least yung time na kini-clear sa kaso, nakakulong. May batas na ganon, may batas na ganon. Sen Nancy, Madam Chair, gusto yata magsalita sa Nancy. Go ahead, ma'am. Sen Nancy. Oh, pero wala pang nasasample lang din sa batas. Kaya nga, pinasa, pinasa, <laughs> pinasa na nga namin yun eh. Wala pa rin. Oo, we will ask, ano, DOJ, sa hearing ng DOJ, natapos na ba hearing? Sa plenary ng DOJ, we will ask. Sige, I will join you, Madam Chair. I will support you 100%. Uh, talagang, kailangan talaga masampula ng isa. Kasi kung hindi, walang matatakot. And uh, I know Sen Bong will be with us on that. Um, malaking issue to the first term, ni, first two years yata ni Pangulong Duterte, that was a big issue for him and he made a commitment to really put these people to jail. Naalala ko pa Sen Mix nung uh, nag, uh, nag, uh, naging resource person si then Mayor Duterte sometime in 2013. Napag Napag-usapan ko ito. Uh, That's uh, my uh, hearing. He came. Uh, uh, pumunta po siya sa hearing ng ano, Department of Agriculture. Anyway, Secretary Dar, uh, magtulungan tayo dito. Uh, tuluyan talaga natin itong mga to. Opo. Kasama po ka kami sa inyo. Wala pong problema. Salamat. Si Madam Chair, Senator Mee, may I just uh, interject? Sure, sure. Uh, uh, tanghali na, gutom na ako. Gusto kong gisahin si <laughs> Uh, Secretary uh, Dar. Uh, anyway, I just want to uh, express my uh, uh, support for the department uh, with the permission of uh, our colleagues lang po. Maikli lang po ito. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, Secretary Dar, fellow colleagues and uh, resource persons present here today, I will not uh, interpose any questions. I am here to manifest my full support to the budget of the Department of Agriculture, headed by uh, Secretary William Dar. It's uh, banner programs and the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. The Department of Agriculture's 2021 budget uh, trust priorities and strategies uh, support the vision of a food secure and resilient uh, Philippines with the prosperous farmers and fisher folk. Uh, I trust the department to stay true to its uh, vision and continue their efforts in providing a reprieve to our uh, less uh, fortunate farmers and uh, fisher folk and ensure production, availability, accessibility, and affordability, price stability, and, uh, and of course, uh, food uh, safety. I laud the swift response of the Department of Agriculture to address the dismal effects uh, of the ongoing uh, pandemic. The department provided uh, financial subsidy to more than 530 rice uh, farmers. They have released and uh, continue to release uh, zero interest loans to marginalized small farmers and uh, fisher folk and agri-based uh, micro and small enterprises. In addition, they have extended support services, education, training, and agricultural uh, equipment and facilities to our uh, uh, poverty streak and farmers and fisher folk. They help uh, 
they provide in turn safeguarded our nation's uh, food security, which is uh, vital uh, to each and everyone's uh, sustenance. In addition to the passage of Bayanihan 2 has also empowered the department to further uh, uh, its efforts in assisting our farmers and fisher folks during these trying times. The Bayanihan 2 directed the Land Bank of the Philippines and Development Bank of the Philippines to prioritize agri-fishery businesses and agricultural cooperatives, farmers, fisher folks, and other agricultural workers in the provision of low interest and flexible loans in addition to an appropriation and standby fund of 24 billion pesos was allocated to assist our agricultural sector, I call on the department to safeguard and spend this uh, appropriation uh, judiciously. Kailangan unahin po natin ang pinakamahirap na magsasaka. Huwag po natin silang uh, hayaang magutom. Bigyan po natin sila ng, ng lahat ng kailangan nila para makabangon po muli. Nakikita ko po sa mga social uh, media yung mga naghihirap natin mga kababayang magsasaka. Ang mga magsasaka at mga mangingisda po natin ay may tituring nating importanteng frontliners ng ating bansa. Kung wala po sila, wala tayong makakain sa araw-araw. Okay, at nakikiusap po ako sa inyo na gamitin ang budget ng maayos up to the last uh, centavo. Para sa ating mga magsasaka at uh, mangingisda, Bukas po ang aking opisina. Napakinggan kayo. Kung mayroon kayong, mayroon kayong nakikita ang anomalya, ako mismo ang magkocall out sa mga bulok na opisyal na inuuna ang kanilang pangsariling interes bago ang interes ng bayan at ng Pilipino. Uh, yun lang po. Maraming uh, salamat, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Zubiri Majo, salamat uh, for allowing me to uh, interject. Uh, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, can I uh, respond? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Please? Uh, we recognize yeah, uh, the town in Maraming salamat uh, ulit, uh, Madam Chair, Senator Bongo, and the others, uh, Sen. Migs, uh, Senator Nancy. Asa po kayo na kami po sa kagawaran ng uh, pagsasaka ay uh, ang interes lang po ng bayan, ang interes po namin. Ang serbisyo para sa bayan, kagaya po ninyo, ay ang serbisyo po namin gagawin. So uh, we will fully uh, do the best to make a real, a real uh, enhancement of food security for the country. So maraming salamat po sa iyong malaking suporta at kami po ay nandito para sa Pangulo at sa, para sa bayan. Marami pong salamat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, my last point, uh, my last point. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Bong. Thank you. Um, sir, finally, na lang, you know, uh, to an industry that's close to my heart, uh, it's more technical, actually. It's just more technical. Uh, the industry that's close to my heart is the sugar industry. Alam niyo naman po, I'm a fourth generation sugar man. Uh, coming from Kabangkalan, Negros Occidental. Our roots are from there. And, uh, you ano lang po, I've, uh, some complaints that reached my office, and uh, I just want you to look into this. May uh, on the appointments of certain personnel, SRA is a SRA um, heard me there with us uh, with us today, Madam Chair, uh, South Africa. Um, uh, Madam Chair, sa Monday po ang uh, parte ng SRA to present the budget. Sa Monday, ah, sa Monday pa. Okay, I can take this up, um, Chairman, on Monday na lang. No problem. Po. Yeah, I so don't want to bother you any longer. What is the question? Actually, question. Yeah, ano lang po, Madam Chair, yung um, the appointments, there were appointments made by the board uh, on the deputy administrators. Uh, think para alam mo na lang, Chairman, on the deputy administrators. Apparently, um, out of the, I think the board of SRA is the one that approves or uh, or uh, uh, gives the certification or authorizes the appointment. Uh, apat po sila, Madam Chair, si Secretary, si Hermes Serafica, si Dino Yulo, tsaka si Rolex uh, Beltran. Uh, um, apparently, the two, uh, two uh, board members, uh, si Dino Yulo and uh, Beltran, were not informed of the appointments. Oh. Pero pinapalabas ay they were appointed with the approval of the board. So, hindi po majority ng board yan. Uh, Madam Chair, kilala niyo naman si Sir Dino Yulo, yeah, kaibigan yeah. natin pareho. So, they're just questioning the the 
propriety of the appointment of these two administrators, deputy administrators. Baka naman the secretary can look into it and then on Monday he can give us an answer. Uh, maybe you can review the appointment, secretary. Unless talaga mga bata mo yan, secretary, na you know it will help, then I will convince them uh, uh, otherwise, uh, Mr. Secretary. So I just want you to review sana because the complaint reached my office that there was this kind of appointments that were not, uh, uh, we did not have the full approval of the of the board. Um, you know, want, uh, to, we can discuss this on Monday for me, around. I want to ask add also it. to that so that uh, because the secretary has been here for only one year, diba secretary? Uh, but uh, we have really problem with SRA because, alam mo, during the beginning of my term, I passed the CIDA law. That law is, is providing for two billion a year assistance to the sugar industry. But unfortunately, pag titingnan mo sa budget ngayon, 700 ngayon, di ba? Kasi yung nag-start ng 2 billion, hindi nila na-implement. Naging 1.5. Tapos nung 1.5, hindi pa rin na-implement, naging 1 billion. Nung 1 billion, hindi pa rin na-implement, naging 500 million. Ngayon na lang, kasi nagsasabi na kami na baka ma-implement na kasi at least yung 1 billion na infra, uh, na pumirma na sila ng ano sa DPWH na DPWH will implement, they will just, uh, what you call this, uh, identify the places where the farm to mill road will be implemented. Yun ang problem namin dyan kasi nagkamali kami na binigay namin lahat sa SRA yung pera tapos hindi naman nila na implement. If you can only uh, secretary study the CIDA law, May pupuntahan ng pere. Uh, I think uh, 1 billion for farm to market, farm to mill road, uh, 300 million for credit sa uh, land bank, 300 million for the black farm, that's the land reform beneficiaries, and another 300 million for farm improvement, and one, uh, 100 million for uh, scholarship. We're so unhappy with the CIDA law kasi walang na-implement and it has been going on for so many years to the point na bumagsak ng bumagsak ang budget. Hindi naman namin ma-justify sa, sa DBM na ibalik sa 2 billion kasi sabi nila eh, hindi man na-implement eh. hindi siguro kailangan ng pera. That's the problem with CDA, uh, with the SRA. Kaya siguro you have to discuss this ensure that chairman of the board you discuss it with them that you know we passed this law we had a hard time that is the first law i passed in my stint as a as a senator eh, i failed <laughs> because they were not able to implement it ngayon ang law ko pag pinapas ko iba iba chair, madam chair let me correct madam chair huh? you did not fail you did not fail, ma'am. You had the best of intentions. Yung nag-failure dyan is the implementing agency, Madam Chair. I just like to put that on record. Kasi isinentralize ko yung implementation. Kaya, Secretary Dar, napapansin mo ngayon yung mga batas namin. Uh, pinipili na namin yung implementing agency para pag nag-fail lang isa, hindi nag-fail lahat, di ba? Para hati-hati ang trabaho kung merong mag-succeed, hindi the whole program will fail. Kaya ganyan yung RCEP, ganyan yung ASEP, ganyan yung ano, yung Coco Bill, ganyan din eh. I, I, pinaghiwahiwalay ang implementation kasi sa SRA sinentralize and then they fail to implement. Yun ang binibida ko sa iyo, Secretary. So you will be guided accordingly because I've been here for seven years. You are on your second year. So I know what happened to all of this. Kaya... Binibida Sige ko lang sa iyo para ito, for you to be guided accordingly para pag minamanage mo sila, yun ang problema nila, yung implementation. Opo, Maraming salamat po, ma'am. So siguro yun, uh, yun na lang, uh, isa po yung punto na ibabanggit ko sana, yung implementation ng CIDA law uh, and uh, the chairperson was spot on. We wanted to add additional funding, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Madam Chairman, I would like to make a motion with uh, Senator Sani Angara na dagdagan yun. As long as we can get an assurance check na may implement talaga ito kasi napapahiya po kami sa DBM na na-revert back ang pondo at uh, talagang napakasayang ang batas ni Senator Villar. I, it, was, 
you know, the people of Negros, Iloilo, Bukidnon, Dabao del Sur, uh, Tarlac, uh, Northern Luzon, sa areas na may uh, kalamay, ay areas po na may asukal, um, ay ano po, ay uh, tuwan-tuwa dun sa batas na yun. So, this was the law that was supposed to make us competitive among the countries like Thailand. So, um, for, fortunately, wala po nangyari, Secretary. So, uh, yun din po, I'm with the chairperson and hope, hopefully, you know, we'll add a bit, bit, bit more budget and hopefully, may implement din po siya, Sec. We will uh, do the best we can, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Chairman and San Migs. Uh, we will. Thank you. Thank you. Yun lang po, Madam Chair. Secretary, I wish you the best of luck and uh, I wish you more power and strength. May God protect you always, lalo na sa COVID-19. Uh, please stay safe. Stay healthy, and to the department uh, members, to our colleagues in the government service, uh, mabuhay po kayo. Yun lang po, I'm here. We're, we were here to ask questions, not to criticize Seca. We are partners in development. Ang amin dito, I have no personal agenda. Mine is really just to help our farmers in our different uh, respective areas uh, of the country. So, maraming salamat, Sec. I'll see you on Monday, maybe during the briefing, ma'am, of SRA. I'll just ask okay. SRA what had happened dun sa, sa appointments na medyo technical po yan. I want to ask the processes on how they were appointed. I don't know them from Adam, Madam Chair. Wala po akong pinala sa dalawa at wala po akong ini-endorse na any one of them. I just want to make sure that uh, when there is an approval of the uh, board, at least the uh, majority of the board uh, would approve it para hindi naman ma-question. So I'm just here, Madam Chair and uh, dear Secretary, to really support our local farmers. If you see my page on Facebook at Instagram and uh, uh, Twitter, it's always buy local, buy from our farmers, buy local farm produce. Uh, and so I'm really pushing for the buy local team by Filip pro-Filipino uh, products. Yun lang po, Secretary. Maraming salamat. May God bless you. Stay safe po. Stay safe. Maraming salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat po uh, sa inyong mga ideas. We will always be uh, doing the best for this country and all these ideas are very relevant. Madam Chair, Senator Migs, maraming salamat. Salamat po, sir. Salamat. Salamat po, Chairman. Thank you very much. Madam thank Chair, you. thank you. Oh, welcome. Uh, now we go on. Uh, we have finished the corn. I think they have asked the question. They have asked the question on rice. We'll go now to the organic program. I just wish to inform the secretary that we have passed the na amendment to the national organic law. And it has there, there is a bicameral report, so it will go now to the president. And that is meant to... Uh, uh, make the organic certification cheaper for our small farmers. So it's a simple law. So are there any questions on the organic program? So we can go to the next. Uh, so no question on the organic program. We go now to the, uh, except I hope this organic fertilizer and soil, uh, soil amendments will be transferred to the composting facility. Kasi walang budget yung composter, maybe this will be used for that, uh, Secretary. Kasi meron ditong uh, organic fertilizer and so soil amendments na 94 million. Maybe you should transfer this to the Bureau of Soil and Water Management para ma mapaltan yung natanggal na budget sa Bureau of Soil and Water Management which is implementing our uh, composting program. Okay? We will so, do that. Yeah. We will do that, Madam Chair. Okay. In the livestock program, do, do you have questions? I think they have asked questions on livestock. I guess ang question lang naman dito is uh, how are we doing with ASF? Secretary? ASF, okay. Uh, can I request uh, our National Director of the Bureau of Animal Industry to give us the latest okay. on the ASF. Okay, thank you. Okay. Madam Chair, magandang hapon po, Madam Chair. Uh, 
is uh, Dr. Domingo po sa Bureau of Animal Industry. For the uh, last uh, month po itong uh, year na to, wala po tayong bagong uh, probinsya na, uh, na putukan ng African Swine Fever. Ang naobserbahan po natin, uh, Madam Chair, uh, sa mga nakaraan na buwan po, ay meron po siyang gradual spread do sa mga magkakatabi na bayan at sa barangay. At the moment po, ang ating uh, na depopulate na baboy, yung naapektuhan at na-expose, yung reported lamang po ay around uh, 350,000 na po siya. Pero dahil lang po sa scare na dinulot ng African Swine Fever, yung iba pong mga nag-aalaga ay nag-slow down, yung iba ay nag-early harvest na po sila. Kaya po sa nationwide po ay meron po tayong estimated na 20% reduction sa swine inventory po natin. Hardest hit po ang Central Luzon at Southern Tagalog. Kaya po yung mga nagsusupply ng baboy sa Metro Manila, mas malayo na po binibilhan nila. And this adds to the cost of the uh, retail prices of pork in Metro Manila. Yun lamang po, Madam Chair. In fact, ang complaint ng mga nagpadala sa akin ng sulat ay tinatanong sa inyo, bakit nagmamahal ang pork sa Metro Manila? <laughs> Oo, yun ang complaint nila. Tatungin ko daw sa inyo at yan nga ang sagot na kaya nagmamahal ang pork sa Metro Manila na bumagsak ang production because natakot sa, sa ASF. Ang gusto ko lang i-remind sa inyo, siyempre yung may, mga backyard farmer na na-ASF, hindi nila ire-report at ipipilit nilang ibenta yung kanilang baboy kahit may ASF pag hindi nyo binig, binayaran. Di ba? Eh, ang problema ng, uh, from my experience, ha, kasi nag-ASF din tong kapitbahay namin, bako or eh. Uh, from my opinion, From my observation, ang tagal magbayad ng ano, DA. So, yung mga may, may baboy na may ASF, gumagawa na lang sila ng paraan na pinagbibili nila ang baboy nila kasi di naman mahihirap lang sila, kailangan gumawa sila ng paraan sa buhay nila. Kaya kumakalat ang ASF. Kaya I think you should, uh, your procedure of paying should be mabilis. Kasi eh, pag hindi mabilis ang pagbabayad nyo, eh, ilulusot nila yan. Kasi mahihirap lang sila. Walang panggagalingan sila ng kita eh. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we agree with you po, ma'am. At uh, we also heard the complaints po. At uh, binigyan na po kami ng instruction ni Secretary Dar na uh, pabilisin po yung uh, proseso. Uh -huh. Ito po kasi ay magsisimula po, ma'am, sa local government unit. Makikipagpartner po dun yung ating regional Department of Agriculture no, no, no. Representative para po sa validation po ng data. Pagdating po sa taas, meron pa po tayong national validation na po po. sa sabit ng secretary. <laughs> Pag ganyan ang procedure nyo, eh, ipagbibili ng, ano, ng small farmer ang kanyang baboy. Oo, ilulusot niya yan. Kasi hindi naman, siyempre, ang isang mahirap na tao, wala naman siyang pakialam kung sasabot ng ASF. Eh. Ang pakialam niya lang kung may kakainin siya, may kita siya for the day. Oo. Tapos, ang local government, at least from my experience, ang local government nagbibigay na rin ang sarili nila. Bukod sa inyo, di ba? Yes po, Madam Senator. At uh, katulad po nabanggit po kanina maga ni Secretary, ay uh, nag-utilize po kami ng technology para po mas mabilis po yung validation. Ay, binisan nyo kasi ilulusot talaga. Kaya yan sumabog eh. Kasi inilusot ng mga farmer. Kasi siyempre mahirap sila. Wala naman silang pakialang kung sumabog yan. Basta kumita lang sila eh. Siyempre, ganun naman lang eh. Oo. Kaya kailangan yung pagbabayad nyo mabilis para pumayag sila. Napatay na lang yung mga baboy. ba? Diba? Oo. Oh. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, Madam Chair? Yes, uh, sec uh, uh, Senator Binay. Secretary, ang ibig sabihin ho ba neto, eh, patuloy na tataas pa rin ang presyo ng baboy? Eh, marami daw tumigil ng pagbababoy. Kasi pag na, na, na ano ka ng ASF, sabi nila eight months na hindi ka pwedeng mag-alaga uli in the same place. Tama ba yun? Oh, you have uh, to, yes, po, ano? uh, depende uh -oh. din po sa... Good husbandry practices na ginagawa po ng farmer kapag hindi naman siya naglinis, hindi siya nag-disinfect, maaaring more than 8 months pa po yun, ma'am. Kaya mahalaga po yung cleaning and disinfect. Uh, kaya hindi ka mag-aalaga ng 8 months kasi infected yung lugar mo. Eh, ang daming infected. So marami na rin hindi nag-alaga. Kaya 
oh, bumabaho ang supply. Ang, pro- ang bumabaho production. So, oh, it's, secretary, it's ibig sabihin ho na ito, mahalang hamon ngayong Pasko. <laughs> Mayroon man tayo, Madam Chair, yung nasabi na po ni Director Domingo na yung mga hindi po apektado ng ASF ay doon gagaling yung mga baboy papunta sa metro areas, kagaya Metro Manila. Mas mm-hmm. mahal lang po. Mas mahal. Kasi Southern Tagalog at saka Central Luzon ang hard hit, di ba? Tama po. Okay. So, no more question on the last 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 last. Yeah, yeah, okay. Secretary, hanggang ngayon, bawal pa rin tayo mag-angkat ng baboy, di ba? Madam Senator, bawal po tayo mag-angkat ng baboy okay. sa mga bansa po na merong African swine fever at okay. African yes, mouth disease. At the moment po, meron around the 10 countries supplying pork to the Philippines. Okay. So, siya na lang yung 10 countries kung saan patuloy pa rin yung pag-aangkat ng baboy. Thank you. Patuloy po din, man. Tuloy, tuloy po yung pag-import po natin sa kanila. Okay. So, may hamon pa rin. May hamon pa rin, Senator. Kulang <laughs> pa lang ang baboy. <laughs> oh, time for that to check may hamon pa rin sa Pasko ha ano na, nababawasan na yung jeta namin ng bagnet at longganisa at empanada <laughs> oh, na we, will, tayo we will just eat the, no, chicken kasi hindi ba kulang ang market okay, chicken okay. <laughs> tama po yun chicken, chicken po, na lang so tayo so chicken, puro chicken <laughs> chicken nuggets uh, mura lang pakainin si vice chair po <laughs> okay, we go to the <laughs> We're finished with livestock We go to the high value crop development Are there questions here? High value Ang question ko lang dito Secretary Alam nyo, yung kasi concern na concern Ako doon sa cacao and coffee Because they are intercropping sa coconut But in the last Siguro, end year <laughs> Wala naman nag increase sa ating cacao and coffee. So that means yung high value crop development natin is failing kasi mga high value crop to eh, cacao and coffee. Ang uh, cacao, we are on, only producing 10% of our demand for the whole Philippines. 50,000 metric tons in demand, 10,000 lang pinoproduce natin at 8,000 yan doon pa sa Davao region. Wala sa ibang lugar. Uh-oh. And then yung ating coffee, ang demand is 100,000 metric tons. Ang napoproduce lang natin, 30. Oo. So, so, and that, 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 those were the figures long time ago and it's still the same figures. So, same. I'm saying na yung ating high value crop, parang taon-taon may high value crop development tayo at ang laki-laki ng budget, 1.2 billion. Pero sana may maipakita tayong nag-increase ng production na high value crop. So maybe uh, uh, we will ask our high value crop development program kung magbigay sila ng report ano-ano ba yung high value crop at magpakita sila na may na-increase ba sila sa production ng high value crop with this program. Oo. Sabi pa nga yung banana may problema din kasi yun ang malalaki, banana, mango, uh, and of course, cacao and coffee. So maybe you can make a report on how you have increased the production of high value crop with this program. Sige, Josek Labinia, please. Uh, good, good morning, po. Um, Wait, Madam Chair. Man, for our cacao, po. For our cacao, po. Uh, we we can give you a comparative from year 2016, po. We have about 14,000 uh, hectares po. And then in 2018, 18,000 po yung increase. Yeah, but the and production is still the same. Uh, the, uh, the productivity po oh. is almost one kilo per, ano po, per tree per hectare. No, I, let's uh, just simplify it. How much are you producing? Kasi tinitingnan ko yung, yung production figure eh. Kasi, kung sabihin sa akin, ang dami-daming, ang dami-daming ektarya, ako wala namang production at the end, that's useless. So, I'm just telling you to produce the statistics 
on what was the production in 2016, what is the production now? Para we can compare if we are succeeding. Kasi baka marami tayong programa, wala namang nagsasucceed dito sa programa natin. And in the end, the best way to know is if there is increased production in that kind of crop. Kaya maybe you can enumerate the high-value crops and how the production increased from year to year. Diba? Because that is the best gauge of whether we are succeeding in our program. Kasi kung hindi nag increase maybe your program is wrong. Diba? We will do that. Po. We will in do the that. End, uh, in the end, it, it's the amount of production that will be very important. Diba? Uh, tama po. We will have to focus maybe the on the priorities of the province or the region para oh. hindi lahat ay parehas yung... Uh, uh, implementation in terms of nationwide implementation of a yes. commodity. Yes. So we will report to high value. At ang daming commodity po na nakalista with, a small, budget, with a small budget of 2.5 billion. So ito po yung Madam Chair, uh, group yeah. na, uh, ito, ito po yung isang grupo na programa na gusto natin sana madagdagan na in the future years yung budgetary support kasi the, the, the comparative advantage for a good number of these high-value commodities will give us higher levels of uh, income at the end of the day. So, But hindi mo na lang i-limit yung high-value para, para nakafocus. Para makita okay. natin kung talagang nakaka-improve sila. Kasi mamaya, bibigyan mo malaking budget tapos wala ring improvement. Sayang naman yung budget. So, mag-identify mag na lang. Di ba? Yes, Senator Aimee. Uh. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, ang hinihingi ko, hindi naman malaking budget. Uh, ang kailangan lang talaga sa mangga, hirap na hirap na po kami. 20 years na yung seaseed fly, yung kurikong na tinatawag ng mga magsasaka. 20 years na hanggang ngayon, hindi pa nagagawa ng research. Ewan ko, sa katutak na research, hindi naman tinututukan yung talagang sakit. Hindi tayo makapag-expert dahil dito. And this goes across the board from region 1, 2, until 6 and 7. Puro problematic sa mangga dahil lahat may sakit. So kung sana yun na lang ang tutukan nila, hindi naman malaking budget yan, may idea na tayo kung anong gagawin dyan. Uh, they have so, a research, research budget of 110 billion. Eh, ang laki nga yes. nung, ba, saan ba natin yung budget na gagawa? 110 so, million. 100. Madam Chair, Senator Raimi. It's been going yeah. on for 20 years po, hindi na susolusyonal, lumalala. Yun po ang uh, susolusyonan na natin. Mayroon na kaming nakalaan na pondo para sa, sa seaseed fly. So asa po kayo, uh, gagawa po kami ng, uh, ng solusyon yung problema sa seaseed fly. Uh, if, uh, if, if I may also mention yung bawang po at saka yung problema ng, uh, ng malunggay. Yung bawang kasi uh, hanggang ngayon hindi namin na po propagate yung magandang stock. Paliit ng paliit yung uh, Ilocano Gold na tinatawag. Paliit ng paliit, eh, butil na lang. Samantalang palaki ng palaki yung Chinese, talong-talo po kami sa kilohan eh. Uh, Tama po at... Uh, uh, Itong, uh, we really po, need your Madam tissue. Chair. We need your tissue culture and propagation uh, expertise. It's not really budget, just uh, just improving and uh, some technical input. Po. We are allocating also to Mariano Marcos State University itong tissue culture para sa garlic po. Uh, Tututukan nila yon. Kasi medyo mahina. Ikatlo po yung malunggay. Ang export potential ng malunggay is endless sa Japan pa lang at saka sa Germany. Wala po tayong programa ng malunggay, hindi ko po maintindihan. At saka solusyon din siya sa malnutrition ng kabataan dito sa Pilipinas. Ang dali-dali, tusok ka lang ng tusok sa lupa. Bakit hindi tinututukan niya ng DA? So maybe Mayroon today... Today we can choose the high value crop that we will focus on kasi yung listahan dito pagkahaba-haba eh. Kaya yung iba naman eh, hindi kailangan. I-focus natin yung ating high value crop. Hindi naman nila kailangan lahat to eh. Eh yung malugay, pwede yan. Miski sa urban agriculture, itusok mo lang sa mga plastic-plastic yan. Pwede na yan eh. Tutubo, miski saan, makakakain. 
Katulad nito, school gardens, lang. 45. Eh, wala naman na. Pasok sa school ngayon eh. Bakit <laughs> nakatayo ng 45 million sa school garden? May napasok ba sa school ngayon? Hindi nga sila pinagtatagal sa school eh. Hindi ba online? Opo. May, oh. Mayroon na po tayong programa sa Malunggay starting this uh, dry season na po. Oh. Siguro... Uh, uh, Secretary Labinia, Secre uh, Yusek Labinia and Secretary Dal, pumilo na lang tayo nung ano, yung ifo-focus natin. Kasi pag lahat pinokusan natin, walang lalong nangyayari. And then, okay. i-monitor nyo kung nai-increase nyo yung production every year nung ifo-focus nyo. Like, tingin ko, it's coffee, cacao, mango, banana, malungga. Yung mga med demand talaga. Kasi yung iba naman, hindi naman, ano, sabi mo nga, garlic. And onion, iyan yung mga sikat. Ang laki, laki kasi ng importation natin sa garlic eh. Oo. Oh. Ang garlic yata, ano eh, dati yan 15% ang production natin, naging 8%. Opo, kasi bumabagsak na sa 6 na po yata eh. 6 na ba? But it ang, started at 15%, secretary. Bumaba na ng bumaba. Bumaba na ng bumaba. And yet, lahat ng ulam natin may garlic. That's right. Ah, may onion. Ano ba yan? Diyos ko. Kailangan namin ng tulong sa stock yung uh, technical input para makapag-propagate ng matinong seed. Ang papangit eh. Alam naman niyo yung farmer, ibebenta lahat ng maganda dahil may timbang. Tapos yung mga bubot na tinatapon na reject, yun ay tatanim. So kada taon, paliit ng paliit, pakonti ng pakonti ang ani. Opo, we will uh, have a rebirth of the garlic. Uh, as I've said po, <laughs> yung uh, tissue culture <laughs> laboratory <laughs> ay uh, mabibigyan sa Mariano Marcos para sila nakatuka doon sa... Eh, uh, nagbigay na rin ako dyan sa Mariano Marcos noon eh. Noong nag-aakway sa garlic, I gave uh, money to Mariano Marcos eh. Wala rin oh, nangyari yata. Hindi na po sa research po. Dapat itutok talaga na sa propagation of seed. Huwag naman puro research. Tututukan oh. po na ang paglinis. Opo. <laughs> Yan ang lagi ko sinasabi na yung research should amount to something. Hindi That's for the true. sake of making research, but how it can be applied to improve the daily lives of people. Yun lang naman. Hindi naman ako against sa research, pero it should amount to something on the lives of people. Huwag natin We basta ibigay, tapos wala namang mangyayari. Diyos ko. Bumagsak na. Dati yun eh. Gal inis na inis ako kasi 15 to 8. 15% to 8%. Ngayon pala 6 na. <laughs> Marapit ka na mag zero. I mean. <laughs> Kaya nga, papano? Ang baba ng presyo, tapos ang konti-konti pandiliit. Ayan. So maybe, Secretary, we can choose the crops, the high-value crops we will focus on. Maybe. Opo, Madam Chair, Lady John, oo, para may mangyari sa atin. Huwag masyadong madami kasi walang mangyayari, di ba? Madam Chair. And then we, we, ano, we, ano, the growth. Para alam mo na after doing this, walang nangyari, there must be something wrong, di ba? Madam Chair? Yes, uh, Senator Binay. Doon ho ba sa listahan ng high-value crop, meron naman ho kaya doon nag-increase ang production? At ano, we will ask, Secretary Labinia, Yusek Labinia, may nag-increase ba doon ng production doon sa high-value crop? Question na, si Lupet. Yes, ha? Uh, utom na, utom na. Nag-increase nag po para hindi kayo mag-utom. <laughs> Saan nag-increase? Anong crop? Nag-increase. Anong crop ang nag-increase para good news naman sa amin? Ano ang nag-increase? Banana. Banana. Okay. Ang... Masa may sakit ang banana, Masaan? di ba? Nabasa ko sa dyaryo, going down. Going down ang banana. Di ba worried na ang banana industry? It's going down. May ang eh. banana po, ang banana po, Madam Chair, ay... Local sufficiency level in terms of percentage, nasa 330 percent tayo. O, sa natin dinadala, banana. Export po, karamihan po ito. O nga, pero may nabasa ako sa dyaryo na worried sila kasi may sakit daw yung banana natin. 
Mayroon, ma'am, mayroon problema kasi yung Pusarium wilt, which is oh, uh, a transboundary plant disease na ito ay, uh, it's uh, again a combination of good agricultural practices plus the introduction from Taiwan. Sila lang yung nakadevelop, nakadevelop ng uh, variety na banana that is uh, resistant dito po sa Pusarium wilt. So yun po, mayroon na tayo sa Mindanao. Ililinisan continuously pa natin ito through tissue culture po. Okay. Pero hindi ba ang banana is private sector led? Yeah. <laughs> di ba? Hindi marami naman. Tayong, marami, marami tayong, tayong small growers na uh, contracted by the private sector. So oh, tutulong yeah. rin tayo. Okay. Anyway, uh, yun lang ang gusto namin. Magawa na lang ng report. Piliin na lang yung ano, yung kung sino yung ipofocus na high value crop at i-monitor kung tumataas o bumababa. Para naman may measure natin kung ano nangyayari sa atin through the years, di ba? Opo. Gawa we'll tayo na, oh, oh, ayusin nyo naman yung programa that it will really ano, result in... Uh, production. I wish to acknowledge the presence of Senator Joel Villanueva. Pakita siya ng pakita ng banana dito. <laughs> Masarap po banana dito sa Bulacan, Madam Chair. <laughs> Bang Bulacan banana. Anina pa siya. Oh, do you have any questions? Yes, it's my turn. I will wait for my yeah, turn. Yeah, we've been here for how many hours? You, yes. It's your turn. Madam Chair, I want you to know that I have been listening attentively since uh, Senator Kiko Senator Ivy, <laughs> Senator Biggs. I was listening attentively. I, I, I'm not going to take long, Madam Chair. Yeah, I'm okay, okay. Uh, before, but if I may, Madam Chair, and uh, I'm sure all of you are aware of my uh, of my uh, concern with regard to uh, 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 plantilla positions in the different agencies and departments. Uh, uh, our department. I always raise this, Madam Chair, every year. So again, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that I am uh, supportive of uh, Secretary Dar of the entire uh, uh, the Department of Agriculture uh, family. In fact, I was one of the members of the Commission on Appointments that confirmed Secretary Dar because we believe in him, his in integrity and the uh, capability to lead the uh, department. But you know, Madam Chair, uh, as you all know, I always raise this every budget hearing and we have seen a lot of improvements in the different agencies and the departments of government nag improve yung plantilla positions nila, yung mga unfilled positions na pipil up uh, yung pati yung mga job orders nagkakaroon ng uh, trabaho etc. But if you look at the department, uh, Madam Chair uh, there's about 2,600 positions in the uh, OSEC 600 positions in BIFAR and a thousand other positions in the department, remain unfilled, uh, Madam Chair, since 2019. Yung last year na ni-raise ko po during the budget hearing, the same pa rin po. So, my question again is, how do we plan to, uh, how do you plan to fill up this uh, position within next year, uh, dear Secretary? Madam Chair, uh, Senator Jewel, maraming salamat po. Ako din, uh, nayayamot sa mga niya na sitwasyon. And that's why, Mayroon kaming grupo dito na uh, looking at every possibility na ma-recruit uh, na yung mga qualified na staff to, to, to really man those plantilla positions. At the same time, ang isa pang objective ng grupo na yan ay based dito sa pandemia, ay we need to restructure kasi hindi halos lahat po ay kailangan eh. So we need to reassign our people to those functions that we feel are very important. So ganun po mayroon tayong uh, uh, grupo headed by the Undersecretary for Admin and Finance, assisted by the Undersecretary of Policy and Planning. That we uh, take a look into this uh, seriously because uh, every year na lang po, nire-raise ko po ito, panahon pa nila Secretary Pinyon. And if you look at the, the, the present the situation right now, for example, let me just give you one example. Sa BIFAR, meron po na uh, 600 uh, positions na unfilled. 
Pero meron po sila na 4,424 na job orders, 32 casuals. So, nakakabahala po, no? Just just one example. And again, as I mentioned, I believe in you, Secretary. I hope and pray na next year I will not be repeating the same uh, issue uh, sa, sa ngayon po. Uh, uh, ang taas ng ating unemployment rate, uh, double figures po yung percentage. And uh, syempre, gusto natin makatulong naman dun sa mga kapapayan natin na nais magtrabaho. Um, another thing that I'd like to uh, raise... Uh, I just uh, want, uh, can I interject? I just want to ask question, why you cannot fill a position when you have so many uh, casuals? Yung, uh, Yun nga, uh, I, I, I am giving them... Job order. O oh, parang hindi, they don't jive, di ba? Oo. Yeah. But mas gusto nila yung... Madam Chair, you're correct. But Madam Chair, like the... Senator, yes, yes. I am giving, I am giving the, all the bureaus, all the units to have it filled up in the next three months. Otherwise, uh, mawawala yan. They will not also be able to get job orders. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, thank you for that. I'm sure a lot of your employees, casuals, and the... Uh, uh, contract of service workers will be very happy with your uh, statement. Uh, siguro just to fast track na lang, Ma'am Secretary, no? can I ask for a submission na lang po yung, uh, kasi napansin ko po yung uh, special area for agricultural development uh, uh, program. Medyo behind po yung dismal, uh, uh, medyo dismal po yung budget utilization performance. Baka pwedeng uh, malaman kung bakit. And then yung uh, Training of workers, every year din po, i-re-raise din po natin ito. Yung, uh, uh, kasi ho, yung, yung study ho, yung uh, uh, in the indus different industries, isa ho yung agriculture uh, sector na mababa yung training of its workers. And if you look at the... Uh, Magic, uh, the, uh, poor training. Opo, yung, yung, yung tinitrain po na nag-work, hindi pa po yung... Walang trabaho, nag-training, tapos mag-work. Pero yung working, and then you 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 train them again, uh, you up, uh, up, up, upgrade their skills, uh, yung reskilling, uh, 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 upskilling, yun ho, medyo mababa po yung performance ng agriculture sector. In fact, uh, pag tinignan po natin yung uh, number of extension workers trained by DA to support the capacity of LGU uh, farmers, fisher folks, and other beneficiaries declining po, Secretary. If you look at it, past three years, makikita po natin, for example, in 2019, uh, ang target po is 168,000. Nung 2020, naging 98,000 na lang. Ngayong 2021 po, 61,000 na lang. Uh, so, pababaho ng pababa. So, that explains the perhaps the 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 the, the 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 trend no na downward alam naman po natin yung mechanization yung artificial intelligence yung uh, fourth industrial revolution is just around the corner we wanted to make sure na tayo naghahanda rin po tayo dito para ma-upgrade ma -up, uh, ma matumaas yung level of uh, competency understanding and the uh, technical know-how of our agricultural workers so i hope i'm not going to dwell so much on that because i know we're pressed for time can, can I just ask for a submission of this, uh, Secretary? Thank you. I want to yeah. add something there. Uh, Secretary, we have established in our list 2,367 farm schools all over the country. And they are at our beck and calls because they want to teach farming. You just have to give the module and their farm will our farm schools. So if you say... 2,367. There is a farm school in every town in the Philippines, and that and and there they will be paid by Tesda. We gave a budget to Tesda to pay for the tuition of these students, and this is additional income to the farms. 
imbis na ang pinagkakakitaan lang nila yung kanilang pinoproduce na uh, agricultural commodities, pwede pa silang kumita sa pagtuturo. And they applied for this. Oo. So, sana magamit natin to at meron naman budget sa TESDA, nagbigay ang RCEP ng budget sa TESDA, magbibigay ang COCO bill ng budget sa TESDA, magbibigay ang, nagbigay ang ang TESDA for agriculture, sabi nila sa akin, 300 million daw eh, a year for the other oh. aspect of agriculture. So talagang mara may mga farm schools, may budget sa TESDA, kailangan lang uh, uh, make use of these schools and TESDA to teach about agriculture. Oh. We will, we will, as a matter of fact, TESDA has been a strong partner with through yeah. RCEP and we will uh, bring them as well in areas of Uh, capacity building po. So we will do that po. Oh, we will, uh, in in uh, coconut, we have allocated a budget for TESDA also for coconut farmers. And they have a budget for other agriculture, 300 million a year. So talagang naandun ang budget, naandun ang school, kailangan lang natin encourage na mag-aral doon sa school. Oh. Opo, opo. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, for that. And uh, uh, to add to what uh, the good uh, chairperson of this uh, honorable committee uh, made mention, TESDA actually allotted 30% of its all programs in the scholarship program to agricultural sector. So uh, I hope and pray, uh, uh, Secretary, and I will be looking forward to the uh, submission of uh, your report as to how we're being able to... to uh, 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 implement yung capacity building uh, measures natin para naman po hindi mahuli yung ating uh, mga workers uh, kasi nasa 80-85% if I'm not mistaken of our workers in all sectors of the society are somehow at risk because of uh, fourth industrial revolution, AI, robotics, etc. So we look forward to that secretary and uh, thank you. Um, another thing that I'd like to ask uh, secretary is... We will do that. Thank you, thank you, Secretary. Uh, another thing, Secretary, no, uh, yung dun sa 10 billion budget for farm-to-market roads, I just wanted to to raise if we are confident uh, uh, that the full budget of this program will be utilized by the end of the year. So perhaps right now, the good question would be, where are we uh, in, in, in as far as uh, uh, budget utilization is concerned? Because we are all aware na Uh, we are adopting a cash-based budgeting system. There were moves in the in the uh, House, in, in the Senate. I think Senator Aimee was uh, uh, very uh, passionate about this, na magkaroon ng extension. So with that, I just wanted to find out where we are, uh, Secretary, on this uh, particular issue. We, we are ready. We have uh, all the FMR list uh, ready. And that... Uh, everything will be obligated through the PWH implementing. And so you're confident, the... sir? Opo, opo. Okay, po. Oh, sir, so, uh, perhaps if we could also ask yung uh, cost-benefit analysis, for example, sir, yung uh, estimate the number of farmers who have directly benefited from our farm-to-market roads, yung uh, total of uh, num number of uh, farmers, Um, um, uh, today and how many have uh, efficient access to uh, markets uh, due to uh, poor infrastructure. Uh, baka yun na ho, hindi lang po kami nun para mapag-aralan natin ang gusto and, uh, and uh, as we move forward, alam po natin yung ano pa, ilan pa yung kailangan natin paghandaan, ilang pang kilometro yung mga FMRs na kailangan natin pagtuunan ng pansin na uh, still lacking in Uh, urgently needed in our country. We will study that, uh, Your Honor, uh, Madam Chair, and give you the the uh, attendant uh, results of the study. Mm. Secretary, I'm trying. To... I wish to remind the 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 ano, Senator Joel that in the CEDA law there is a one billion budget for farm to mill farm to market. The farm to mill road na hindi naman na implement dahil uh, hindi nga na implement uh -huh. and then another in in the coco bill we will give uh, 
uh, 500 million a year for uh, for uh, FMR in coconut producing provinces. Nakalagay doon. So, uh, those oh, are additional you. budget. Oh. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, last, last two points na lang po that I'd like to uh, raise. Secretary, I'm, 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 I'm concerned about this uh, posting sa DBM. I saw this Nakalagay, Secretary, only 27 provinces and chartered cities were provided with production support services and support to construct market-related infrastructure. And uh, according to this report, uh, sa website po ng DBM, this is lower than the original target of 86. So from 86, it's down to 27. May we know the, uh, the reason only 80, that it's not pandemic? If I if I got the question right, I think these are just the initial target uh, area and going forward. Ganun po, San, San Joel. Okay. Uh, so, hindi pa updated ito, no, Secretary? Hindi pa po. At uh, depending din sa budget available. Opo. Thank you po. And uh, one last thing, uh, Secretary, kasi kasama rin po nitong report na to. You show, uh, showing the department's uh, um, a missed target for 2019 of 15,580 hectares of land area served by irrigation projects. Uh, tungkol naman po ito sa irrigation, no? compared to that uh, target, the department has only served 9,051. So from 15,580, 951 po yung nakalagay. So, Siguro hindi na lang po ako ng report din about this. Perhaps this is not also uh, updated. Pero nakalagay ko kasi, syempre, may magsasabi sa atin, magkukol ng attention sa atin. And perhaps yung uh, what are we working, uh, uh, how are we working uh, yung pong um, uh, National Irrigation Authority to support more than 6,000 uh, hectares that were not served if these uh, figures are, are, are correct, uh, Secretary. Madam Chair, uh, Senator Joel, if I may, uh, the, the question I believe is to be rightly answered by the NIA. NIA po ay hindi kasama under the DA oversight. Okay. Sige po. Uh, we'll, we'll, perhaps, ma Madam Chair, we, we can ask NIA na lang. And, uh, yeah, and it's on Monday. It's on Monday. The hearing of NIA is on Monday together with the Philippine Coconut Authority and what will be left of the Department of Agriculture. I think Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources will present a, a new budget. Okay, Secretary. Okay, po, Madam, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Again, thank you, Secretary. And, uh, Maraming again, salamat po, jo Sec jo Senator Joel. Joel. God bless po, Secretary. Thank you. Salamat po. Madam thank Chair. You, Madam Chair. Yes, yes. Yes. Madam Chair, uh, mayroon tayong naka-prepare na observance of the World Food Day celebration at mm. 2 o'clock. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. so we have more or less finished the banner program because uh, uh, the halal is uh, self-explanatory. The market development, they have asked questions on this. So maybe we Madam will... Chair? Yes, yes. May, may ano lang ako? Hingi lang ako, yeah. siguro kahit sa vision na lang ako. Kasi alam naman ho natin, before COVID, nagkaroon uh -oh. tayo ng taal eruption. Uh -oh. Tatanong ko lang ho kay Secretary kung ano na ho yung assistance na nabigay natin dun sa mga farmers natin yeah. from uh, na naapektuhan ng taal eruption. So we will Marami. ask the Secretary to, to make yeah, a submission. Submit. Because... Uh, submit. Oh, Senator yes. Binay is from uh, Apo, uh, the family is from uh, Batanga, so it's, she's very concerned. So maybe you can make a submission, and then uh, we can suspend the the hearing and, because uh, we have ma finished Madam the Chair? program. Yes. Yes. One, one last na lang ho, dahil alam naman ho natin during the period of COVID. Marami hong naging mahilig sa pag-aalaga ng mga halaman. Marami hong naging plantita yeah. at plantita. In fact, oh, sa lugar ho ni Senator Joel Villanueva, eh, yun yung pinakasikat na supplier ho ng mga uh, halaman. Meron ho ba sa labas programa? Lang, ang, sa labas may lang. programa ho ba ang DA 
uh, sa ating floriculture industry. Okay. Alam po ninyo, ang floriculture, kagaya ng iba't ibang high value commodities, this is one of the commodities sa uh, high value na uh, to be left with the private sector to lead. Wala, wala tayong suporta po doon sa, except to to exhibit, you know, request them to come together and exhibit their uh, best products. From time to time, ginagawa po natin yun. Yeah. But in fact, Secretary, di ba isa to sa may potential for um, export, salong lalo na yung pag-export ng foliage. Meron ho, but wala ho tayong binibigay na assistance sa industriya na ito. In fact, alam ko ho si Madam Chair tuwing may show whether it's Orchid Society or Philippine Horticulture Society, laging, laging si Madam Chair Villar ho ang nagre-ribbon cut eh. So, so far, <laughs> ito kasi, meron sila dito, other farm inputs, flower inducer and fertilizer, 29.8 million. Flower inducers po ma'am ay for mango. Mango, <laughs> for the flower. mango ba to? Kala ko sa floriculture. Maybe you can allocate a certain amount naman, oh. high value. In, in oh, yeah, naman natin. Oo. So, Tulungan nyo naman. Uh, mag, mag, uh, magbawas ka dito yung hindi naman nila masyado. <laughs> Oo oh, nga, magagalit yung mga kapitbahay ko dito, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. We will try. Sige po, we will uh, try to identify one or two uh, yeah. floriculture commodity na may export potential. At yun ang okay. sinasabi po natin. Okay. Good, okay. Thank you. Siguro one of the revision of the high value. Secretary, uh, tignan din natin kasi for example, itong gagawing airport sa Bulacan, I'm sure ang laking quality Uh, a quantity ang gagamitin, lalong-lalo na dun sa mga ganyang programa par, as part of the Build, Build, Build. Eh, uh, maganda siguro an, another form of livelihood itong ganitong uh, floriculture industry. Yeah. Presently talaga, ang dami pong uh, engaged in the floriculture industry and uh, even without... In fact, your high value, your USEC is came from the floriculture industry. Yeah. Uh, that's why, that's Labinia. why, <laughs> Under Secretary Labinia is saying na uh, uh, mayroon tayong uh, engagement with the organizations involved in ornamental agriculture. Okay. okay. And then, last and last, Secretary, alam naman ho natin, langin niya na tayo next year. Siguro first submission na lang ho kung papaano natin i-assist yung mga farmers natin mag-adopt. For La, La Nina. We will. We will do that. But the 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 uh, La Nina that's coming is what they call a very moderate La Nina. And that's a good uh, phenomenon. Kung moderate lang. Oh, thank okay. you. Ma'am, idagdagdag ko lang dun sa sinabi ni Senator Nancy, Secretary, dito sa Giginto, Bulacan, uh, banggitin ko lang ko, ang dami yung tao ngayon lagi, nagbibilihan ng uh, halaman, etc. Talaga po yeah. puluho. I hope na matulungan natin yung industriya, uh, especially dun sa binanggit kanina, perfect timing yung binanggit ni Sen Nancy at ni uh, Chair uh, uh, Cynthia Villar. Kasi po, oh, talagang yung uh, for export, uh, yung export quality, maganda, matignan po natin yun. And uh, uh, ibo-volunteer ko po yung uh, lugar namin dito sa Kikinto, Bulacan. Bula Salamat po, Secretary. Okay. Opo, opo. Uh, so, maraming salamat without, po. With those questions, we would like to suspend our hearing of the Department of Agriculture to resume uh, on Monday morning. Thank you very much. Maraming, maraming salamat po.